Hello, everybody. It is time for some Legally Cute. I am Cutie Roo. I am the host for Legally Cute, and this is a show about cute, cozy speed runs being showcased today. I am super, super excited. We have some more cute indies. We have Trifox. We have Stonefly. Those are going to be fantastic races, as well as Blue Fire. And for Trifox, this will be our first one. It's going to be a race against Osmorn versus Cell. And we have our commentary, Half Beastie, on the call. And I just want to say hi to everybody. Say hi. Hi. How are you all doing? Are we ready for this race? I know I sure am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm ready for this race. I definitely want to see who the winner is. I'm I'm, I'm sorry, but Oz, I'm rooting for Sal. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like, you know? They all do, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you did right. beat me only a couple weeks ago, so. Yeah, we're going to have that redemption. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Alrighty, well, when you two are ready to go, just give us a countdown half, BC, and we will be starting to start with our race. Alrighty then. Well, Cell, Oz, I wish you the very best of luck with this run. I hope both of you are ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. Alrighty then. In that case, in three, two, one, let's go. Good luck. It's good luck. Yes, good luck to both of you. So, this is Trifox, a game about a fox on a quest. And the quest is to get his TV remote back. Because, you know, he was just casually enjoying his Sunday morning cartoons when some bad guys came in and trashed his place and stole his TV remote. And, well, that's enough of an excuse for me to go on the genocide or rampage, so it sure is for this fox. We see our racers starting up in the intro level, a very well designed, just tutorial kind of level where we learn about the three different fox, uh, classes this fox can be. <laughs> the warrior class, the engineer class and the mage class. Um, the game itself has uh, plenty of abilities, 30 in total, spread among the three classes. But for the speedrun we'll only be using a very select few, starting with what we see here, the warrior dash. Which we use because we can basically use it infinitely and it gives us a lot of speed, which, you know, is usually a good thing for speedruns. Yeah, I'd say speed is very great a lot of times. Um, and the time to use an ability, including this ability up here, um, the hammer, which is a kind of like a secondary ability that we're going to get. It uses up, as you can see in the far left, a blue bar called mana. Um, and typically speaking, you will not dash so much to the point where like that's going to be a problem for you. Um, occasionally, you might, um, but typically you you want to like make sure that you're not using up too much mana because if you run out, you have to wait for it to like recharge, and that's and then then that only then can you use your abilities again. It's um, one of the more frustrating things in the speedrun sometimes. Yes, this game does have a bit of uh, mana managing, especially during the later fights where we're going to be using a lot more of it. But anyways, we see both of the runners going for a bunch of coins here. Um, we don't need to do a lot of money managing just at the start. We do need a bit of money to buy our first ability later on. And so the runners will be collecting somewhere between 600 and 700 coins out of the intro and then fill that up to 1250 by the end of the first proper level. Both runners now out of the intro going towards that first level. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, this first level is pretty simple. We have some really good strats we use, um, but the majority of it is, in fact, just movement and combat, not any huge skips or glitches, aside from this first one, which hopefully I can get. I have been having some difficulty with sometimes. I, oh, okay, I did, I did. Okay, it, we, it was shaky, but we got it. <laughs> Uh, what I just did there was a cutscene skip. I just went around a trigger in order to prevent it from activating. Ooh, a cell falling down there. She. I know oh. the ninja though. Yeah, the enemy self-destructed, so the cutscene still skips. So yeah, uh, in that spot is a cutscene to introduce the first enemy to you, the first real enemy. But um, there is a very small spot on the edge of the cliff there where we can stand and keep on dashing to skip that cutscene. And another way to skip that cutscene is to just get rid of the enemy because there's nothing left to introduce. Ooh. 
And one particular piece of movement that I'm doing a lot in this run is um, dashing and then jumping in midair and then dashing again and then jumping in midair again. Um, it's pretty because you have a double jump um, essentially in this game. And so you can gain a lot of height and a lot of speed at the same time by just dash jump, dash jump. Although it's kind of finicky to get the timing of it right at first. And yes. that flank that I just moved on is going to move on to that button while the head that we grabbed is going to move on to the button on the right. Oh no, it rolled oh, off. Oh, the head rolled off, yeah. How awful, excuse me. No, okay, it's gonna be one of these days. <laughs> oh no, come on. I just kill the enemies at this point because they're just gonna keep harassing you. Yeah, you're right. I, I yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, it was like so close to getting the door. Um, open yeah. To. My god. So we're supposed to press these two buttons for a little while to open the door and normally you'd have to stand on both of them for a little while while those enemies try to arrest you. But we were like, you know, we could also just put an object on the buttons and let the enemies just run around aimlessly. And Cell is actually getting the head, so gaining some time back here. Are those pillars? You... Yeah, okay, I have enough coins. Yeah, you have enough, yeah. I was talking about money routing earlier. Um, there is not much run money routing in the game with the strats we use at the moment, but we do need 1250 by the time we get out of 1 1. Because we need our first ability for 1 2. And Oz did get enough money. I think Cell is right on the edge there. I think you have enough I have, like, I have, like, I have like 1400 right now. Yeah. In total. And Cell has 1255. <laughs> F funny story, my current BB, which is also world record, actually doesn't have enough money coming out of 1-1. One -one. What? Where'd you get the money? Yes. Uh, there are some boxes just at the entrance to the ability room. Uh, okay. You can smash yeah. for the final money. Yeah, that's a good backup. Yeah. So that costs a few seconds if you do... Uh, if you are short a few coins. If you're short like 50 coins, your run is probably dead. Mm-hmm. But yes, we saw us buying the ability just now, and it's the ability we buy here is the single most uh, well, the single most important ability for the speed run, because it allows us to do a lot of funny things, and it's the flame turrets. I think Oz can explain what the flame turrets do. Yeah, the flame throwers are very yeah, the flame turrets are really really useful in the speed run. Oh my god, I usually never go through those arrows without them pushing me back. I'm glad that I did that time, um, <laughs> and so. We are essentially the flame. The, the flame turret you essentially can just put anywhere as long as there's some kind of stable ground. And what we're gonna be doing right here is oh, okay, that works. It's not ideal, but it works. Um, essentially, just using the um, turrets as uh, platforms in order to get out of bounds, like I am right now. And yes, these turrets we can also use to get onto invisible platforms, like so. When now we're really out of bounds. And using that right here allows us to just skip a really tedious part of this level and go straight into the final fight. Yes, indeed. And so normally um, this level is a T-split. That The T-split is just after the room where we go out of bounds. And first we'd have to go left, go do a very, very, very long button press. I think it's like a minute to a minute and a half where we have to defend against a bunch of enemies before returning to this room where we are, we're at now. But by doing that out of bounds, we just skip that entirely, just go straight to this final room, and do the crap defense sequence. So, also, Cell yeah. also got the skip very nicely, so... Beautiful. Okay, so this final fight is actually... Um, me, personally, haven't really gotten it down as optimized as it could be. Um, the, the, uh, the crabs are not RNG. Um, they're just like they are they spawn based on your positioning in the level essentially they spawn wherever you aren't and so if you have a consistent method of placing down your turrets and enemy combat you should theoretically um always have the same outcome when you're dealing with the crabs um but typically speaking i just have um like just i don't have the consistency required to like like manipulate the enemy ais like that um, because I'm all, I'm always all over the place and I never remember where the crabs can come out no matter how many times I do this run. I'm just like, where is the crabs? I'm immediately looking for the crabs, but, um, but I'm sure Beastie, um, who is, of course, the world record holder of this game, has gone it down to a science as to how to do this room efficiently. 
uh, honestly, for this room, no. I, I still don't have it down to a science. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, it's supposed to not be RNG, and I believe it's not RNG, but every now and then, the AI on one of the smaller crafts can just break and they'll just go off into the sunset and show up like 20 seconds later. At least that's how it feels. <laughs> yeah, because ideally, because after this, there's a there's a um, trigger that you have to walk into in order to make the boss spawn. And ideally, um, you would be in this cutscene, like already in the trigger when that cutscene starts, so that when it ends, you can just immediately activate the trigger and bring out Bob. Um, Bob. This is yes. Bob. He is the only named. Hello, Bob. Uh, he is like literally the only named. Um, uh, no, not true. There, there are other names. Oh, really? It's the only, one that the, there's, it's the only internal dev name that the devs have. Oh, the internal. Oh, okay, I see. But yeah, yeah this is Bob. <laughs> he is the boss of uh, level one two, and ideally, we place our turrets in such a way that he doesn't attack the turrets, and the turrets just fry him up because we all have fried crap. Ooh, I'm gonna get some. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Bob also has like this one um, uh, like oversight in that um, if you stand within like a one inch radius of him, he just won't be able to hit you. Um, you, you like his his range of attack like is just too far for him to hit you if you're really close to him. Yeah. Yeah, in an absolutely ideal scenario, you place all three of your turrets around him, and he starts attacking you and not your turrets. Yeah. Um, both of you had a bit of issues with that, but got him fine pretty well there. So now yeah. both of you are on to 1-3, which is one of the longer levels in the in the speedrun. Mm -hmm. um, there's not really any like skips or glitches in this level. It's just like this is like one of the few levels in that we do like everything quote intended, just like in the intended path. Um, yeah, it, it's not there. Yeah, of it, course. This level has some uh, optimizations mostly. Uh, there is a way to make the level significantly shorter, but that would require getting abilities that are very expensive and that would require more time to grind money than it's actually worth. So yeah. We theorize using that kind of thing for a new game plus um, kind of speedrun. Um, yeah, and but like just for coming out of a fresh file, it's not really something that you can viably do. So these two oh, buttons, right. Come on. ooh, these two buttons Almost need to be pressed at the same time, so you can't do this without grabbing the hat from the Indiana Jones section. Um, I have tried putting vases or boxes on top of those buttons; they just instantly break the moment they hit one of those two buttons. Okay. So that doesn't work. You can put an enemy on top of that, but you need the enemy to stay still for long enough. <laughs> mm, sure. So again, something that just doesn't work with the abilities we have. So got the Kobe there. Yeah. Oh, come on. Don't stand on the edge, because you're gonna uh, you're fall. Oh. <laughs> Where'd you go? There oh there he is. Oh, you went running way off. Yeah. Okay, so Oz is now in the underground section, so it's about to get there. And in this underground section first. We have to go place two of the skulls on these pedestals to open a door. Excuse me, thank you. <laughs> and then we have to clear out two different sections of this underground area in order to go back up. And so Oz is doing the right side first here. Yes. Um, this right side is um, like they're both they're both the the most um, the most you really have to worry about these places is the enemies. Oh, 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 what am I doing here? Come on, I'm gonna get healthier. Thank you. Yeah, right. that's very fair. <laughs> All right, a little bit of a time loss, but I'd rather. But death is slower, so like you know, it, it, it evens out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can use turrets here as well to like uh, distract the enemies and kill them, so they don't like bother you while you're on the button. That's like probably one of the safest things you can do, and doesn't really lose oh. any time. Oh, oh, I am stuck, and that's a weird spot to be stuck. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, is that a, is this a this never happened before moment? That's or that's a, that's that's legitimately <laughs> never happened before. <laughs> oh, you right here on GDQ Hotfix. I know. I seem to have that happen a lot. <laughs> I always yeah. think it's fun to have that's never happened before because it's like really special moment that you've never quite seen. Oh, oh I was uh, okay. so yeah, close to that tackle. 
And this vertical section is a place where we really abuse oh. the turret to skip some of these platform cycles because those platforms are quite slow and they're also just aligned in such a way that if you do it without using turrets, you're yeah. gonna be waiting for cycles a lot. Yeah, and I, w I barely got those cycles. Um, one thing I forgot, I guess this is a quote glitch. I don't know if you'd consider this a glitch, but like when you put down the turrets, they don't have collision until they're done. Like you can see that the turrets do like an animation of like the gears turning when you put them down. And um, they, ha they don't have collision during that animation. And so you can actually like put them on a wall and then jump through them. And then once the animation finishes, um, you're able to stand on top of them. And so you saw me do that in order to climb up without having, having to actually use platforms. That's like the only reason that those fast cycles work is because we can use the turrets to climb up. Yeah. Um, and that aspect of the turrets also makes it very easy to vertical, vertically climb these turrets, whereas it would be mm -hmm. pretty difficult otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Um, would you consider that a glitch? Question mark? No, it's, a, it's not a glitch. It's a... Uh, uh, at worst, an exploit. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I can get behind that. Alright. Mm -hmm. And in this lap section, it's pretty much the same thing twice, where you just, um, you have these enemies and you need to just hold down these buttons in order to open the door. Sometimes, again, turrets are your friends in multiple ways. You can use turrets to distract enemies um, and just kill them so they don't have to bother you. Yeah. And these buttons can be pressed by boxes or faces, but um, well, there are no boxes here, and faces are very, very difficult to push around. <laughs> uh, tr trust me, I've tried. <laughs> can you not put turrets on buttons? Uh, you cannot put turrets on buttons. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw the red thing pop up when I was like over on the button, and I'm, I'm just like, I'm surprised. First of all, that I never tried to put a turret on a button, and second of all, <laughs> um. I'm you seriously never tried? Wow. I've, I've literally never tried. I've never once thought to put a turn on a button. Uh, yeah, I, I have tried with the passes, but they are so difficult to push around because 99% of the time you just walk over them instead of pushing them. <laughs> <laughs> but it could potentially save you a few seconds if you do manage to get a pass on top of one of them. Yes. And thankfully you don't have to deal with those enemies over there. So you can come into this room, and this is like an escape sequence where you have to climb up before um, you have to climb up before the water catches up with you. Except the water moves egregiously slow, um, and so yeah. it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and this section we actually have to do pretty normally. Um, we, we would like to vertically climb this, of course, but the central pillar of that room we climb is actually walled off so you can't actually get out of the central pillar other than through the door at the bottom and you can't actually get back into it other than through the door at the bottom <laughs> yeah all right let's see how um the three fight goes i usually oh, yeah. this usually ends up being a pretty good fight for me so i'm sure it'll go fine you know the um, new strap for it there is a new strap for it you There's why don't you tell me these things you didn't you did not tell me this one <laughs> you need to watch pc stream more often i know oh, right God. But yeah, this is the first instance of a pretty big mob, uh, yeah, pretty big mass fight. Um, it's not the hardest fight in the game at no, all, no, but no. it's definitely a bit of a lag up on other fights you've had so far. Uh, the hardest fight in the game is 3-3, but we skipped that one, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. What is going on here? Why can't I use my... Okay, that was strange. Oh, okay. we're in a super slow down state, yeah. Yeah, I was that was strange. I'm trying to avoid enemies right now because I want help. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, that's good. That's good enough for me. Nice, right, right, Back to fighting. Yeah, this uh, fight can get a bit messy and can get a bit, a bit slow very quickly, especially if you get hit a bit too much because there's just so many enemies you're trying to control. Yeah. Okay. And... This is a very awkward fight for me. <laughs> yeah. The warrior smash definitely, or the warrior attack definitely helps with that a bit. Because uh, the warrior attack does hit every enemy. Yeah. But Cell is doing the alternate new strat, which is to place a couple of turrets on top of a pillar and just stand on top of them. And the enemies are just kind of gathering underneath the turrets and dying to the turrets, while not being able to do anything. Really? Yes. Yep. And if you do it well enough, it's actually about as fast as the fastest you can actually fight normally. <laughs> That was not one that Cell had told me about. She told me that 
there was a new world three strats which i will admit of course i didn't take the time to research but she did not tell me that there was a three three strat that was new at all you need you need to, like i said you need to spend more time on beastie stream yeah learn right. learn these things <laughs> Uh, I have actually also redesigned the strat for the one three fight a little bit, but mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable with that redesign yet. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Anyways, we're up to the first boss. The three uh, first bosses in this game are designed after the Tri Fox classes. Oh, that's fine. It's just small loss. <laughs> but yeah, um, and the first boss is designed after the Warrior class, and we have a Warrior Pirate, basically. So the pirate is a bit of, uh, well, a wimp. He just hides upon those platforms, being like, I'll let my minions take care of you. Until, of course, you throw some bombs at him to destroy his platform. I want you to attack me so that the turrets can get you, please. All right, no, <laughs> those guys yeah. can No, I don't like when cutscenes happen. No, do not walk into the, to the UFO, oh, please. Oh, you can still make it. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. the turrets okay. got him, nice. <laughs> But yeah, at half health, he flees again to the other platform. We bump oh, it down. Wow, it oh, like wow, that. that still hit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and now we just kill him off, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. There, that's, uh, well, that's almost. That's we, almost but... we, we almost kill him, but yeah, no. It's, it's never that easy, is it? Yeah, and then he decides to drink battery acid for some reason. Yeah. Well, which and is always a good idea. That makes him stronger somehow? Yeah. So, like... That, 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 that turns him, uh, well, into the Tasmanian Devil, basically. Okay, um, right now I'm doing, like, a um, boss manipulation. Whenever you walk up to him, he will always do that attack. And you want this specific attack, because the moment he turns left twice, you want to put down the turrets. Uh, I don't think this is going to work. I think these are way too far, or too close. Ooh, oh, well, yeah. there's two of them. Yeah. I don't think, we're not going to get one cycled, but um, that does help some. Oh, yeah, you're way far away. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, we manipulate the first attack in that phase to always be that spinning attack. Because if we make him do that as his first attack, it will always be the same pattern. And we always know how the pattern goes and where we need to place the turrets. And if we do it well, we can one-cycle him with that strat. Yeah, if he hadn't killed the second turret, it might have one-cycled, but unfortunately, yeah. Oh, that was a clean second phase for me. I'm gonna get all of this for safety because I forgot how much coin I have. Yeah, this is the second point in the game where we need a little bit of money. We need 2,250, right? Yeah, 2,250 at this point. I'm hoping I have enough. This should be if you got 1,500 there. Ooh, wait, oh, wait, yeah. oh, wait, oh, way yeah. more than that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. This is why I stopped worrying about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna get this one. And we're also going to get um, I for this one. Yeah, forgot. yeah, that one. Um, I completely forgot where. I don't know why I, I was expecting this to be um, <laughs> um, somewhere else. But uh, on the left side, we don't use anything from the um, from uh, from the warrior class aside from just the dash. Yeah. So almost got one cycle. Boss just got a bit too far away from the turrets, but that's fine, I think. Yeah, she's got it yeah. now. It was... So the abilities I just bought were the Mage bo Bomb ability, which is a bomb of uh, magical energy that explodes when hit. And that also just does damage to anything around it. And the Gatling Gun from the Engineer Tree, which is the best single target DPSing ability. At least um, as far as unlimited abilities goes. Yeah. Um, so... I'm going to display what each of them do right now. Um, first of all, I'm going to put a turret right here to distract the two enemies and then Mage Bomb and boom. Uh, I, that was not ideal. There we go. That's what the Mage Bomb does. Yeah. Essentially, you just throw the Mage Bomb and then you have any type of damage that goes towards the Mage Bomb will immediately make it explode and then it'll just, um, just damage any enemy in your radius. The catch being that it also damages you. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. And it damages any turrets that you lie down as well. Yeah. And it does 50 damage to anything within its explosion radius, and turrets do not have 50 health, so they just instantly die. <laughs> we ourselves only have 100 health as well. So. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to reset checkpoint right here, and then we're in this new section in which I'm going to switch to mouse, because it's easier for me to aim. I'm going to use that for the rest of the level. 
Yes. And so the main reason that we use the Mage Ball, uh, even though it's an early ability, it does a ton of damage. It does 50 damage in its explosive radius, but it also shoots out eight smaller enemy-seeking orbs, which also deal 10 damage each. And if you somehow manage to get all of that on one enemy, most enemies just vanish when you do that. Okay. So now making her way through the battery carrying section while Oz is clearing out this third defense. Come on, okay. There you go. Alright, beautiful. Um, in this next section, um, you're gonna have abilities to like switch which tracks you're on. Um, the only the first one actually matters, the one I just passed. You wanna go down this road that I'm going down right now. Um, every single one after that is literally the exact same length. We tested it out, and so it just won't, it will not matter if I go up or down, left or right, doesn't, like, whatever path I take, it'll be the exact same length. Um, and so essentially I just want to make sure to not die while I go through what is essentially the game's auto-scroller section. Okay, yeah, not gonna lie, I was looking at cell screen for a moment just there, but did you go down the wrong path? I went down the down path at the beginning. I you didn't did? change oh. the track. Ah, uh, then in that case I must have seen wrong. <laughs> My bad. No worries. <laughs> yeah, Cell doing the third defense right now. And yeah, at this point Oz is just making sure he survives to the end of this section. Um, in in this section pretty... I do like to go left though. Yeah, I, same. What I it, 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 this is the one point where I also go left. Not necessarily for the enemies, but because of those exploding barrels that guys usually tend to explode right when I'm near them. <laughs> and they can actually hurt you. It's it's not easy to die in this section, but it does happen and it has happened to me as well, so... <laughs> I can confirm, I've seen it happen. <laughs> it, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> That's 2-1 done for us while Cell is in this auto-scroller section. Okay. This is a game that I've been meaning to play. I definitely want to play it when I have like a moment. Oh it's yeah, you should definitely do that. Especially okay. casually, it's an amazing game to play through because mm -hmm. uh, you can just play around with the abilities so much more than what we do in the speed run. Oh. And I'm going to praise the devs for a minute because um, they um, fixed the one thing that I found to be very annoying, um, which was any enemy that shot a bullet at you did so much damage in the earlier patches of this game and they nerfed them and I'm so glad that they did <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> okay, makes, except for the Uzis easier. Except oh, for yeah. the minigun guys the, 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 yeah, the minigun guys are still um, very lethal <laughs> Yeah <laughs> uh, What I'm doing right now is another out of bounds section. I'm gonna go around here um, You don't want to open that chest because you want to use it as like a platform um, and I'm gonna be using this turret to just climb up Forwards and go out of bounds up here. And generally out of bounds and also standing on turrets in general is kind of slippery, surprisingly. Uh, well, case in point. Um, but you want to go up here and you really want to make sure that you know exactly where um, the level geometry starts and stops because there are gaps in the level geometry sometimes. Um, <laughs> and I've definitely fallen through them in Marathon hey. before. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, the gaps they are they're fun yeah yeah and and i'm in the final fight and i want to you want to like stay up close because if you go too far this guy won't spawn in until you go back um yeah. and technically this is the second to last room in this stage but we do need to kill this guy specifically and place the battery because if we don't kill him the mm -hmm. final enemy of the stage won't spawn because we can skip this room if we want to but this shield guy over here that we need to kill won't actually spawn and we can't finish the level then. Oh my goodness, why is That was a beautiful happen? fight. That was a beautiful fight. So trying to get the out of bounds. It's a finicky out of bounds. It's very yes. finicky. Okay. Why do I not remember that oh. blast? 
of noise at the end of the level. When you <laughs> when you cover up the pipes, I was just like, what? Oh yeah. And Cell is out of bounds now, so she's going to try and climb the mountain as well. Do I have V-Sync on? Why is that 60 FPS right now? I must have V-Sync on. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, that's 2-2 yeah. done, and Oz is going into the most difficult section in the game. Yeah, it's incredible. Oh, yes. Dark. The most difficult. The most difficult. <sighs> also, in similar to level 1, 3, 2, 3 is another one where we there's like really no sequence breaks or skips. You kind of have to do everything the intended way. Yeah. Um, S sadly, that makes this the longest level in the speedrun. Yeah. Typically, the level threes of each world are supposed to be the longest anyway. Well, you know. except except for three three in the speed run. That yeah. Um... Yeah, but we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get there. No worries. We'll see it. Yeah, we're, we're now Whoa. in a very very difficult section. We we just killed a few small enemies. Uh, now Oz is climbing this wall. There we go. That wall is finicky sometimes. And now he's just gonna sit here for one and a half minutes and no. have a coffee break. Make sure you say hi to your folks. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, ooh, ooh, so. Oh, that no. Is, okay, well, that's never that's never happened before. Yeah, legit. yeah. Another one? A legit. I have, I didn't even know you could fall down there. Okay. I have Where is never there? seen that, no. I'm um, on you, you know that bit. Pull up, pull up Twitch. You can see it there. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you know the bit down. where you have uh, no mountains in the background and you have to just blindly jump onto some mountains before they load in. Mm -hmm. During the out of bounds section. Yeah, right there. Uh, ah, yeah. Apparently there's a little crack there. <laughs> it's like this. Yeah, that was quite interesting. Okay, you've got the cell. Alright, my stop is here. Yeah. Yeah, we always jokingly say that's the most difficult section in the game because, uh, well, obviously, gameplay-wise, that section is just stand around for one and a half minutes. But let's face it, if you actually wanted to make coffee in that amount of time, it would be pretty difficult. Oh, it's fine. The spawn point right there. Okay. Um, all right, and now this next section is kind of divided up into three phases. Phase number one being just kill the enemies, and then that's when the elevator will go down. Um, and then you have to do two other sections and do essentially the same thing. Um, yeah. But we have some small optimizations that we have along the way. Um, but a sequence breaking this level in, and just skipping stuff in this level, is it, we just haven't found ways to do it yet. Unfortunately. But. Yeah, um, and due to the level design, it's also basically impossible because um, the kill plane in this stage is actually tied to the elevator. Mm, so yeah. you can't actually go underneath the elevator without the elevator going down itself because it'll just kill you. And other than that, the level is just not shaped in such a way that you would ever get anywhere, even if you were to get out of bounds, which is which has already proven pretty much impossible. Oh, nice. Well. And oh, yeah, okay. so got it. Okay. Here's to not to falling down any more holes. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, one interesting thing that I'm gonna do here, right here is I'm going to place a turret right here. And so it's gonna come in handy in about like 20, 15 seconds. I'm after I kill these enemies. Okay, you got cell, nice. Don't forget you can grab a checkpoint here by dropping yep, near the door. I know. Yeah. So the turret that. that I just put down essentially prevented that mech from entering the room that I was in. And so the door closed, and since he wasn't in the room when like, the fight was supposed to start, um, the game was just like, oh, he's not there. So you killed him. And yeah. uh, like, he just let me go on. Yeah, ba basically what happens there is uh, the devs put in a bit of a safety so that if an enemy somehow is outside of the room when the fight starts and the door closes, the enemy just self-destructs, and this is to make sure you don't get soft-locked. But we exploit that by just locking him out of the room. Cell is 
coming at the shield guy into two. Oz is moving through the hallways of the first floor of two three. So yeah, the elevator stops at the first floor. We have to go through these hallways to the end to destroy these big generators. Because if we don't destroy them, the elevator just stays locked. Oof, I don't have a lot of health, which is not something that I feel, but like, we'll deal with it. Right, yeah, okay. should be fine. And there's a checkpoint coming up soon, so... Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh you also have health potion, yeah. Yeah, I didn't take it from the first fight. As long as you don't die that, or respawn, that health potion stays there, so... Nice. Oh, so that's what triggers it, okay. Beautiful. All right, so we finished the first side, and the strat that I did um, with the mech and also putting these three turrets down at first, we're gonna use that again on this side. Um, pretty similar fights, just more enemies. Yeah. I was doing some runs myself this weekend. I've got an absolute blast of time. Like, I beat my own goals by what was it like close to 25 seconds over the course of three runs <laughs> just by optimizing everything and there's so much optimization in this level everything from just beating the enemies half a second quicker to oh you put the turrets on the wrong side by the way yeah oh what don't forget what? they come no. from the right on this floor <laughs> oh you're right <laughs> oh wait i swapped them wait no wait huh? yeah Swap them then I yeah. yeah I swapped them then I because I put them, I'm pretty sure I put them on the right wait but enemies came out on the right side on the okay never mind I'm confused I'm <laughs> confusing myself let's let's not focus on the details too hard that's right it happens cells trying to set up the coffee break now you can't jump no. from there right you should what? be able to jump now <laughs> or no. okay well or not No, apparently you can't stand on that. Okay. So we're just going to play it dangerously. That cell's actually doing the trash compactor. <laughs> oh, you're actually doing the trash compactor? Yeah, I couldn't get up. Woo! The trash compactor is finicky because it feels like everything in that room just kills you in one hit or does so much damage. Yeah. Oh, hello. That was a new experience. Unfortunate. There we go. Perfect. Nice. Uh, while Oz is doing the second part of the elevator section, um, and Cell is doing the trash compactor, I do want to talk a bit about why we can't really skip this um, very long coffee break section. And, well, we have tried to find skips for it, but there are a few issues with trying to get skip here. First of all, the way forward is down, and Anything that would remotely ever push you through a wall or anything pushes you either up or to the side. So that's already an issue. Um, I have only managed to clip through a floor once and that was by something forcibly being put on top of me, which nothing around here is forcibly put on top of you. So that does work. And if we try to go up, everything is just very well guarded and there is no way to actually clip out of bounds by going up or to the side. So. Okay, so I'm about to enter the final fight um, of 3-3. Three, three. Yes. You lost my stream? Oh, I can restart it. Uh, oh shoot, which side do I put these on? This side. The first oh. one's on the left, yeah. You have to start the elevator first, though. Oh, that's why we're not moving, okay. <laughs> Don't mind me just, you know, having a little mental coffee break in the middle of that. Yeah, I'll join you on the... I'll come up with some coffee break music for all of us. Um, what, what, what can we do? It was like... Or we should go like the lo-fi version where it's like... Yeah, there you go. That that's a good sound effect right there too. Um, Let's do this again. Hello. All right. So Oz was having some technical difficulties there. Meanwhile, Cell is making her way through the elevator. All right. 
Don't you love ISPs, guys? ISPs, wait, greatest, best thing. Right, I'm gonna restart the fight. I I love ISPs. In no way, shape, or form has my ISP ever. Um, you lost my stream again? You never got back. It says start streaming. Oh, it started the stream. In my end. What is going on? Um. Yeah, I've got both of you. Strange. Okay, I'm. I'm gonna just. Yes. Um, oh. 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 I died. <laughs> that. That's okay. a good moment to pause. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So we are going to go on a quick little, nice little technical break difficulty. Uh, so in the meantime, you can deal with Rue singing or listening to better music on the OC Remix. Uh, we'll be back shortly with some more Legally Q. Stay tuned. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Do, 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 do. Yep, I think the OC Remix is better than me. Um, hello everybody. <laughs> this is Cutie Brew with Legally Cute. I just wanted to come back after we did have a little bit of technical difficulties, but I just want to kind of do a few little announcements while we're going to get back into this race. And honestly, it's been a lot of fun to watch. Um, so for me, I just want to remind everybody that Games Done Quick is returning to PAX East 2023 on March 23rd. 3rd through the 26th, we are looking for marathon style speedruns to showcase the event. If you're interested in submitting, the submissions are open until the 26th of February. You can use the command PAX in the Twitch chat to submit your runs. And also, it's going to be happening. I'm so excited. The next all women speedrunning event, Frost Patels 2023, is coming up this weekend and it's going to start on February 26th. Oh, so close but i'm so happy and if you would like to get involved and watch you could go to the games .com and check out the frame fatales section for more info um if you want to learn more about the charity you can use the command mal hala no mal ah m-a-l-a-l-a -A -L -A in twitch chat to find out more i'm so sorry i need some water and already are we ready for the race everybody i'm ready you ready? Mm -hmm. I'm, I am good to go if BC wants to give us another count again. All right. Well, let's continue this then. Um, both of you were in 2-3. Uh, one is a bit further up than the other, but it's still pretty close. So let's make this a good race for the rest of it. In 3, 2, 1, and let's continue. All right. Um, Chat, I have a question for you. Um, do you like ISPs in America? I love ISPs. I've never <laughs> once had an issue with my ISP. My internet service provider is the best one there is. Um, and I say that with full confidence. Anyway, the race. Um, this is the final fight of 3-3. Of three, three. And the most annoying things are probably the mechs, in my opinion, and just the constant, uh, the constant uh, rockets that they shoot out, and the little, uh, little enemies that they uh, spawn in. Because usually you also have to kill them as well. But they're just generally annoying. Um, and speaking of annoying, my goodness, uh, give me health, please. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And after you kill the mech, there's gonna spawn in two of the shield guys. And they enjoy being very violent. Um, but typically, you just want to distract them with a with a turret or two, and then give them a mage um, mage bomb with uh, your own uh, with your own turret. So yeah, with the architect Gatling gun. All right, and that's the end of three three uh, two three. Sorry. Combining explosives with fire is usually a very dangerous idea, by the way. I wouldn't recommend it too often. <laughs> yeah, uh, do not try this at home. <laughs> this fox is a trained professional. Yeah. Yes, unless unless you too are a tri-fox, please do not do this at home. <laughs> All right, so um, Oz is now coming up to the second boss. Um, as said before, the bosses are styled after the tri-fox's classes. And the second boss is styled after the engineer. These are the engineer twins. Yes, and so I rather mean... than oh yeah, they're they're absolutely amazing. But yeah, rather than fight you themselves, they're like, let's send all these mechanical creations and bombs and whatnot to you, and we'll just okay. sit in this protected shell of ours. Which so works one, fine. Phase one is pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. 
which works fine, except, you know, during level 2, 3, we find out how to overload these machines they create. And so that's what we do, and they just get shocked. And this is a phase that, uh, it's basically the same phase repeating three times, just getting more intense every time. The first phase, we have to kill one of these mechs. The second phase, we have to kill two. And the third phase, we have to kill three. And then, as the, well, the... Yes, go ahead. Uh, the best strat that you want, to, you want to do is essentially spawn in three turrets, and then the mechs will always walk away from you. And so you want to, like, push them into the turrets while using a mate bomb, and that'll kill them, like, instantly. Yeah. Um, which is amazing. And, oh, yes, I got the skip. Thank goodness. Um, nice. So yeah, um, since uh, the they the, the bosses do like to learn from their mistakes, in that um, they will put up a wall in the second phase to prevent you from just walking through. Um, but if you're quick, you can dash without uh, them. And I oh dang wow I severely misjudged where these mechs are going to be spawned, and I died. But it's died. at the beginning of the phase, so it's fine. Yeah, it's but yeah, fine. these uh, mechs always spawn at the same spot. So if you learn where they spawn. After a while, you can just always place your turrets in the right spot and just very quickly kill at least the first one. Yeah. I thought Why I was in the I right spot, but quite clearly I was not. I just ragdolled out, out of existence there. Ooh. Uh, Sounds nasty. Uh, no, no, it, it, was, it was something. I had impressive speed barreling down the hallway. <laughs> Where's the third mech? Okay, there you are. Yeah. Um... Oh, so yeah, these mech walkers really like walking away from you, and every now and then they're just like, I'm going to send on the other side of the stage somewhere completely out of your sight. All right, cool. Uh, let's hope this last phase doesn't kill me. <laughs> it should be fine. But yeah, the, the wall of the laser wall will come up again, and hopefully, if I'm fast, we can just dash through it. We did. Yeah. So those laser walls popped up, and it takes like a second for them to pop up, and they go from the outer ring first to the inner ring. Right. And because it takes a while for them to actually get collision, we can dash through them if we're quickly enough. And this is actually developer intended, and it took us like a full month to figure it out because no one actually tried it <laughs> until I accidentally did it because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> that was one of the best moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was just doing a run. It was like, I was totally not paying attention. I was just dashing. And I was like, Wait, did I just dash through that wall? <laughs> All right. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually going to change uh, the abilities that I have because in this next level specifically, I'm going to be doing a trick that is only possible with this ability. Now, Cell is going to be doing a little bit of a divergence in what I'm doing because she's um, going to be doing more updated strats. Um, but me personally, I don't want to change strats and be inconsistent with them. And so I'm going to be sticking to the ones that I know best. Yeah, that is very fair. So about to maybe three weeks ago, we found some new strats within World 3 that made it more worthwhile to stick to the Mage Teleport for all of the rest of the game after 3.1. But the strats we used before that only swapped to the Mage Teleport for 3.1, and that is the strats mm. also yeah. we'll be using. That's rough. And so you want to just go down these and... Oh, at this, at this point. Oh, what? Are you kidding me? Wait, I'm yeah, that, that can't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to reset checkpoint to reset the cycles here. Um, hopefully we can uh, get a good amount of distance. There we go. That's what you wanted to happen the first time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now we're going to go do some more out-of-balance movements and hopefully not trigger this cutscene in the process. Yeah, so, so far the game has been relatively oh, tame with out-of-bounds stuff. We've had two pretty major out-of-bounds so far. We're now in World 3, and World 3 is um, very, 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 very broken. <laughs> it is. It is very broken. And typically speaking... Okay, good. Good. We're not going to fail. In, we're not going to fail in the same space time. Ugh. Whoa, okay, good. Ugh. Yeah, you, you can't actually fall between there. <laughs> yeah, the last marathon run that I did, I was on that spot for like a full five plus minutes. And it was it was horrendous. But thankfully, we did everything first try that time. Yeah. So Cell is clearing out to three, just getting the shield guys now. Oz is now in what I still consider the worst fight in the speedrun. Um, it is. It is the worst fight in the speedrun, yeah. I would say. Oh, pause. Oh. Sorry, repeat. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Pause, pause, pause. 
Yeah. OBS is disconnected. It says I'm still streaming. No, no, you're o you're okay, Oz. It's you're okay. Okay. They... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Tonight's the cursed That's night nice. of fuck the booze. <laughs> Don't worry, Richard had like this had like weird problems on the restream PC on Tuesday. So. Oh yeah, that's right for Amy's show. That's right. Yeah, but he was in the studio, so must have been different problems. So let's just let me know if there's anything I can do to mitigate this. You're okay right now, I think. Yeah, they they are taking yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just as long as you're not continuing to go. <laughs> I have paused. Hello, everybody. Guess what? A pumpkaboo is in my stream today. So we just wanted to come back and you know, have more of Try Fox because honestly, I've been enjoying the race and I am super, super excited. I am gonna do the honors and start the countdown. Are my racers and runners ready? Mm-hmm. I mean, I sure am, yeah. All righty. So on the count of three, two, one, let's go. All right. All right. Okay, so as we were saying before the stream went down, um. This end fight in level 3-1 is definitely the most annoying and hardest fight in the game. There's a ton of enemies, there's a ton of obstacles. Because of how the camera works very often, you can't see the enemies. And to top it all off, it's close to two minutes of fighting without a checkpoint. So if you die during anything before this uh, level ends, you have to do this entire fight over. So it's a lot of paying attention to where the enemies are, to how to kill them, and just praying you survive and there's definitely a focus on surviving by grabbing health over trying to be heroic and fast we now have these choppers throwing down some exploding barrels killing us sadly enough which indicates the halfway point of the fight <laughs> and as you can see us now has to do the entire fight over again yeah that's disappointing unfortunately yeah, it happens. Um, those barrels do a lot of damage and they have a much bigger range than you think. So it's very easy to die to them. I have been working on trying to optimize this fight as well, because just like the crab fight in 1-2, where enemy spawn isn't RNG, it's dependent on your location. You just need to figure out how to manipulate that. Oh! That was so, a surprise death. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was one of the small guys hitting a barrel and exploding into you. Yeah, it may have also been some mage bomb damage, too. Yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> hey. So, Oz trying this fight again while Cell is working through the engineer twins. But yeah, dying in this fight is just very punishing because, especially if you die near the end, where the strongest, toughest enemies are. It can easily be a two-minute time loss for just one small death. <laughs> All right. And yeah, even though the devs have been generous enough to make it so that health drops more easily if you're low on health, this fight especially seems to drop a surprisingly low amount of health from enemies and barrels. Yeah. That's a rough one. Yeah. <laughs> I know I have lost plenty of runs in that fight, so I still lose runs in that fight. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, these guys... Ooh, I don't like the help that I'm at right now. Come on. Ooh, yeah. And what doesn't help, especially in this section, is the two brawlers, along with the two RPG enemies, they just melt your turret. So it's very hard yeah. to distract enemies with your turrets in this phase. Because, like, he asked just put two turrets down. Three seconds later, both of them were gone. <laughs> yeah, okay, there, that should be good. Yeah, he's now got them all now. Ooh, ooh, oh. Now it's just two shield guys. And, ooh, the second shield guy is a bit slow. That helps, actually. Where is the second shield guy? He's still lost somewhere. 
I always hate it when yeah. that happens because especially when I'm trying to go oh, for yeah. a proper time. Having one of the shield guys be slow can just mess you up. Yeah, we're good. But I got through it fine. And that's the end of 3 1. And Cell is in the final bit of the boss. Just has to flip three switches here without dying. Without dying is the key word. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm dying. You've got this. Nice. And yeah, Cell yeah. has got the twins done. While Oz is moving on to 3 2. And I am going to be changing up my, yeah, my old strats. Um, old strats yes, yeah. Right, I'm going to be I'll changing up. There we go. I keep yeah. forgetting. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's been a it's been a hot minute. So, oh, also swapping back to the warrior dash here. So later on, yeah. we'll be staying with the mage teleport. And I did mention earlier, world three is very very broken. Um, in 3-2, <laughs> once again, we basically skip the entire stage by going out of bounds. This is the only normal bit of the level. We walk over these platforms, go to this torch. Oh, nope. That's... We try to turn it up. These torches, uh, these turrets are surprisingly finicky. <laughs> okay. That? Uh, well, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Works. Is it? It should should be fine. I, I've done. The oh, I guess there. we can just put another turret. But yeah, nope. nope. It doesn't seem like it's fine. Uh, is there anything other way? I found a way. Well, question mark. Nope. nope, that's not gonna work. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this is definitely isn't enough height. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. we'll be doing this with the mage teleport later, and with the mage teleport, you don't actually have to turn it up. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate on my end, but wait. Perfect. Yeah, I, I did mention these turrets are surprisingly finicky. Um, yeah, this there we go. Okay. very tiny skip here also doesn't save that much time because this bit of skip only saves like seven or eight seconds from a cutscene that happens. Because now we're actually back in bounds for a little bit, but we immediately go back out out of bounds here. And again, this section as well with mage teleport, you don't have to turn it up. But we're out of bounds again. And from this spot, we can actually go over a bit of invisible ceiling, follow these platforms, and we can almost, in a straight line, walk to the final room of the level. But first, we have this bit of blind movement. Um, the room underneath those icy rocks has a fixed camera. And because that has a fixed camera, and the area where that fixed camera is is rather large. We have a bunch of blind movement we need to do in this out of bounds section. I honestly can't tell where I am. Just oh, keep you're tapping. doing the old blind movement too. Yeah, yeah. which is harder. Yeah, just keep tapping down right very softly until it pans over. You should almost be there. Yeah, yeah there you go. Perfect. And I got a first try too. Really nice. Yeah. A slow first try, but it's first try nonetheless. Yeah. There are visual cues to this. Um, there is a new strat which doesn't do that very annoying blind movement. The new version is much easier. But perfect. And yeah, and we... now we're gonna get into the this boss, and we we still cannot die. Otherwise, we will get to we get put back to the very beginning of the level. Yeah. So because of how much we skip off the level, and because of how we get into this room, which I'll talk about in a bit, but yeah. Because of all of the things we do, we don't get a checkpoint. And we don't get a checkpoint until after the second phase of this big old fight. So I just did the first phase where he destroyed the crystal. Now he's to go around destroying these smaller crystals to take down the shield and destroy the crystal once more, the central crystal. And once he's done that, that's the end of phase two. And then oh, we're actually I safe. I thought I put it right here. So he needs to bring the crystal down to about half health now. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. The mages are doing quite a number on this to so keep, yeah. keep it up. There All we right, and and now we actually have a checkpoint. And we're actually and instantly going to abuse this checkpoint to do a quick respawn. And this despawns all the enemies that have been in this fight so far. Because there's a bunch of enemies that have spawned during those first two phases, and they will stay up unless we do that quick respawn. 
And if they stay up, that's a lot of enemies to deal with, and that costs a lot of time. And just watching the cutscene again is safer and faster. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, um, the reason we don't get a checkpoint and the reason is because of how we get into this room. We don't get into this room the intended way because we come there from an out-of-bounds section. But more importantly, we come there from uh, by, uh, by teleporting into the room from that out-of-bounds section by mm -hmm. just barely hitting the cutscene trigger on the outside of the room. And I will mention it again once Cell gets here as well, but basically while we're out of bounds, we drop into the abyss just outside of this room. And the cutscene trigger for this room actually stretches to just outside of the room. So we hit that cutscene trigger, and the cutscene trigger puts our little trifox into the room. Mm. That was a nice clean 3-1 fight for me. Yeah, Cell had a very clean 3-1 just now, and is now also in 3-2, while Oz is trying to deal with these two minigunners. So, minigunners, um, they do a ton of damage. Y you want to try and dodge as much of it as possible, oh, especially God. the bullets. Good job, Oz. Because each bullet does 15 it's damage, so and, we only have, yeah, and we only have 100 HP. So... With 15 damage per hit, um, you die rather rapidly. Oh, good job, Cell. So, can jump over from there. Ah, oh, well, no. not like that, though. Right. Oh, that's, that works. It resets you right there, so it's fine. Okay, Cell so is going to do the out-of-bound section with mage teleport strats, while Oz is heading into 3-3, uh, which, um, if, with the death intended strats, is by far the longest level in the game. If you do death intended strats, even as a speedrunner, you're probably going to be somewhere between 10 and 12 minutes for this level. With the way we've broken the level, um, I think all should be around the 2-minute mark. The absolute optimum strats are just over a minute nowadays. Yeah, I'm going to do a slightly older version. And so you're gonna get the best of both worlds with seeing my strat and then seeing cell strat. Yeah. Yeah, we we changed this uh, these strats about two or three weeks ago. Um, Oz hasn't had the time to learn the new strats yet, so he'll be doing the old strats. But they are fine as well. They already skip most of this level. Yeah. So you want to go up here after? Excuse me. This should be enough height. Is it not enough height? Thank you. Okay. And I'm going to activate this checkpoint and just come over here. We're going to go into this room and we're going to do what is one of the harder. Um, oh, well, if I can get there, um, we're going to be doing what is one of the harder jumps in the game and essentially just climbing up this wall with turrets. And from this corner to put a turret pretty precisely down in this corner, as close to the corner as you can get it, and then just boom. That's how nice. you want to. And, and that then jump is actually very precise. <laughs> it is very precise. And thankfully, we did it first try. And another thing about that is that um, the um, the crystal, you can just put a turret down and it'll like it'll uh, get destroyed immediately. Yeah, and if anyone was paying attention to Cell's screen just now, she just got into the final room of 3-2 as well. And you may have seen her fall into the abyss just before entering the room. And that actually triggers the cutscene and teleports her into the room. Yeah, Oz just uh, destroyed the first crystal. You're intended to go around and do four pretty long trials, each lasting about two minutes, uh, in order to reach the crystals. But we've managed to find ways to oh, just okay. get to the crystals way faster. And we've also found a way to not have to destroy all the crystals. No dying, no dying, no dying. <laughs> so Oz will be actually destroying the crystals from two trials. And then also the two crystals at the front door for a total of four crystals. Cell later on will be destroying only two crystals total. That surprisingly worked, okay. Yeah. So Oz is just going to place that turret okay. just inside the edge of that door. Um, there is actually a place where we can put the turrets there where it can reach the crystal and destroy it. Then he's also going to destroy these two crystals, which triggers these cutscenes. Did we... Get no spawn question mark? No, we didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. On. You have to uh, make sure the crystals get destroyed while you're already hugging the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
But yeah, we uh, clearly there's still a door there, but we can kind of turn it up on the side wall. And mm-hmm. then again, this is another one of those walls where placing turrets is surprisingly finicky because the wall isn't just a straight wall. It has a lot of edges and stuff. And that means you can also place turrets basically in very weird angles. There we go. Perfect. But yeah. Oz climbed up, goes over the final door and into the portal. And this portal is, as far as I'm aware, the only portal in the game that spawns just because you're there. Every portal in every level spawns because of an event happening, be it killing a certain amount of enemies, be it pressing a certain switch. And that is a way to safeguard against shortcuts like this. This is the only portal that spawns because you're just there. And that's what allows us to basically skip the entire level. Which brings us up to the mage boss, the third boss in the game. Um, if you do everything intended, this is a very, very slow boss. The, this boss in, with intended threat is about five minutes. Luckily, we're speedrunners. We, we don't do things the intended way. Well, other than this first phase, because we can, that there really isn't anything to break here, but. <laughs> Perfect. Good. So, yeah, normally, this... we're supposed to sit down here on the floor while the mage does a long attack sequence. And at the end of that attack sequence, the mage pulls the crystals down and we can destroy the crystals. However, we just turn it up towards the crystals and destroy them like that. And then. Go to the other side and destroy that crystal as well. I, I don't know how I killed the second one, but you know what? I'll take it. Nice. Good job, Cell. Cell heading into 3-3 three, three soon while Oz is fighting this mage boss. And again, in this phase, for each of the four crystals you just saw, the boss does an attack sequence. And these attack sequences are about 45 seconds each. So this phase alone would be taking around three minutes uh, if you do everything the intended way. We don't want to do that. Instead, we just climb up, go around the pillars on top of the stage, um, with the camera being a bit finicky here, because, you know, we're not supposed to be here. And we can destroy the crystals by just being up here. And that Ooh, saves okay. us a very, very big amount of time. Oh, okay. Oz did get the jump. Climb it's fine. I'm going to have to climb up again here. It's fine. Yeah. The jump towards the final third is a bit finicky, because we Ooh, can actually stand... not quite. Fine. Yeah, no, I'm going to redo oh, this. No. It's fine. Yeah. I put the turret too high. Yeah. You, you can actually make the jump from the two left turrets towards each other, but it's very tight. And if you fall down, you have to climb up again, like us is doing yeah. here on the right side. So while us is doing this again, we can focus on Cell getting the 3 3 skipped on. So. Just like us, uh, she did the skull section. She's now going to climb out of the cage here. But with Mage Teleport, she can do that a bit faster. And instead of going around and clearing out two trials, she just falls down, places the turret, and destroys the two crystals here at the front door. And those are all the crystals she'll need. Because mm-hmm. with the Mage Teleport, also she can move during this cutscene. This is a bit of a, a secret... Uh, an event because of the sequence bake, but yeah, she moves towards this section. She climbs up these turrets, she aims to the top right, and then she can just teleport up. And with the mage teleport, we can actually skip that first door here and just go straight to the end as well. Woo! That was very Perfect. clean, so that was oh, hello, let's not celebrate till I'm out. Come on, yeah. <laughs> that was very okay. clean, so and yeah, that, that skip <laughs> skipping that first door is only possible with the mage teleport, so. <laughs> Very good job. So Cell also heading into the mage boss while Oz is entering the final level. All right, so let's see how this final boss goes. Yeah. First, we gotta go do probably the best section in the game. Oh yeah. So at the start of this level, we kill this Ooh, was... mini gunner, <laughs> grab his battery, bad. open the door, and we get. Well, go ahead, Oz. Talk about it. It's hamster ball time. Hell um, yeah. I'm of the opinion that they should make an entire. Um, Trifox Pinball, dedicated purely because of this mechanic. Um, it is an absolutely amazing mechanic, and the devs just wanted to give the player a power trip before the final boss, and yeah. boy, did they deliver. <laughs> yeah, everything is... in my path is just 
going to be gone. Yeah. The, this hamster wall is absolutely amazing. Um, while we're in this hamster wall, we're invincible. We can still fall into the abyss, but we'll just instantly respawn. We're invincible. Anything that touches us dies, and we're just going to roll through this section here. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's as I said, this is supposed to give us a bit of a power trip before we reach the final boss. It's also supposed to show us that the final boss is actually a big bad guy with a huge organization. Oh, so. But yeah, it's also supposed to show us that the, the big bad guy is just a bad guy with a huge organization behind him, uh, set for world domination. By his, uh, throwing us, um, well, a million enemies. <laughs> That we're just rolling through. Perfect. Yes. And you still have some platforming here. You need to be a little careful. Yeah. But you can't like take damage or anything. You, it, it, you can just fall down and then you'll respawn at the nearest checkpoint. Yeah. You can teleport up from there. Yeah. Good job, Sel. I'm still not quite used to having the teleport. Ooh, hello. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, during this hamster ball section, um, you can optimize the rolling a bit. There's not really anything that makes us go faster other than getting very lucky with like an explosion happening right on top of us. But Oz has now reached the end and has reached the final boss. And the final boss is like, hey, get out of there. We're not doing this while you're invincible. So, uh, yeah, he does destroy the hamster ball. <laughs> Perfect. And the first thing I'm going to do is immediately die. Um, time to do that, it kind of manipulates the boss into going into this uh, phase right here, um, in which you can just easily attack each of its arms. And... Perfect. Uh, yeah. If you do it optimally, he would never move. Yeah. So normally he starts with a very big spinning attack during which it's not only hard to hit the arms, but also very hard to dodge all of his attacks. And at some point we were like, we're not doing this. And someone was like, well, if you just mm. fall into the abyss at the start of the fight, he just stands still and takes a beating until he dies. I'm pretty sure, no, he does that every single time you fall into the abyss, not necessarily at the beginning of the run. Oh, oh did okay. I, did I shoot the other arm? Okay, I thought that I didn't kill the other arm. Okay, fair. Yeah, or he hit an exploding barrel. So one yeah. part of optimizing this first phase is if you place the arms just right, the exploding barrels that spawn around the room are actually in the spots where the arms are and just hit the arms without you actually having to, to do anything. That's All what right. I'm attempting in my runs. Basically, I, I almost always have one arm just completely self-destruct on exploding barrels. <laughs> it's final phase time. We're going to see how this looks. Yeah. Final phase. Um, this is a very hectic, chaotic phase. It's very hard. Ooh. It's very messy. Oh, so. <sighs> you almost had it. Yes. The final phase is hectic and chaotic, but so is the start of this level. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just very easy to die in this final phase. Um, we don't actually see most of the text, uh, most of the boss's attacks. I think he has like five or six different attack sequences he can do. <laughs> Including one attack sequence where he just lifts himself into the air and you can't actually hit him. So, okay, will this work? Yes, yes, yes. yes yeah, you've yes. got this. Okay, wonderful. That's like a perfect final boss. Yeah, I was doing that very cleanly, getting the final boss down. And it's almost time for him. Uh, time yeah. is once his screen turns completely back after entering the final portal. Yeah. It's like once it turns into the, once it swaps to the load, actually. Like, All right, three, two, one, time. Nice. GG Oz. GG. Thank you. Nice now commentary, that's... by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What was the final time? Uh, 108.33. 108.33. Wait, 108.33, huh? Did you just PB Osborne? That's about right. Hold up. Mm. Okay. Meanwhile, let's all go cheer on the cell while we're waiting for confirmation on that. The cell ball. just entered the hamster ball section. 
Honestly, if I have a clean final boss, I may also PB. <laughs> yeah, but both of you were playing really well today. Yeah. I'm going to get a confirmation if this is a PB or not. Hold up. <laughs> As... Oh, don't Give forget it. to show difficulty um, on smart oh, yeah. for yeah. validity. Well, could do, it's not valid anyway. Do so like all the tech issues and stuff. Yeah, still get in the habit of doing <laughs> it so you aren't like me and forget. Yeah. Yeah, I was on normal. There you go. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so Cell so rolling on through the hamster ball section now and heading towards the final boss. There's so many cool little details in this in this part of the level that I feel like you miss because you go so fast. Yeah. <laughs> like one one thing you don't notice in the speed run, um, for instance, is the doors where the gold chests are that we go through actually close if you're not fast enough. So those gold oh. chests, uh, all that money is actually locked by time. But because we're going super fast, we all basically always get it. <laughs> I did not PB. I missed PB oh. by three seconds. Aww. Oh, but <laughs> Very close, though. Close. Yeah, no, that's very, very close, though. I mean, you, you, like, it was still a great, like, it was, it was. still a great run. Yeah. And Cell so doing a minor optimization here. Um, the checkpoint for the final boss is about two or three seconds ahead of where the cutscene trigger is. But if we quick respawn the moment we hit the checkpoint, we actually get moved forward a bit and we save those two, three seconds. Yep. I found that the one day just by randomly pressing restart. Yeah. Just to see. I knew my run was dead anyway, so why not experiment? Yeah. Cell doing phase one, got the manip, so getting those arms down. Yeah, um, trying to get those arms down is surprisingly close, because as you can see, the boss is trying to lift his arms here. Oh, just barely didn't get it. Um, and very often he'll be halfway through lifting his arms by the time you actually destroy it, so. Oh, no. Ah, this phase. Yeah. It's fine. Both of them should be pretty close to that. Yeah, there you go. Go to the final one. I can find it. Where are you? All the way back there. As always, it's on the other side of the... Woo! Hello. I'll just fall off. Good. Uh, that works, honestly. It, it freezes his arms and you get the health. <laughs> yeah, spawn right nice. back on top of health. It's phase one done. All right, now it's time for phase two. And um, Cell is very, very traumatized by this phase, so... <laughs> oh, man. Fingers crossed I don't have that same... Technically not a bug, but sure feels like a bug that happened last time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. So, um, what was it last week we, she did a run for... What was it again? Uh, Lady Arcaders. Oh, yeah, for Lady Arcaders. And she technically first tried the boss, but she died at the same time as the boss did. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I've had that happen before in other video games. <laughs> yeah, and so what happens when that happens is just the cutscene for the ending of the game does start, but the fight still restarts at phase two. Oh, really? Oh, the same yeah. point? The trigger point? Oh, because I yeah, know it's Because there's just a delay. Like, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Because I know like, if you do die at the same time as the boss, it, it's marked as completed, I think. But it just depends on how the check mark system is created by the code. Yeah, yeah. It, they they changed it so it, if you die at the same time as the boss, it's no longer marked as completed. Oh, interesting. Okay. No. Oh no, the brawler. That's so close. Yeah. Yeah, you almost had it. Almost. Second try. Oh, ow! That's Ooh, not yeah. good. Yeah, this fight damage. can get away from you pretty quickly. Um, the devs knew what they were doing. They knew this was going to be a very hard fight. They intended for it to be a very hard fight. And one of the things they did to kind of make it 
a bit more fair on the player is they made sure that the smaller enemies, like the sword guy, sword dancer, uh, cells fighting right now, have a 100% drop rate on health potions. But of course, you do have to survive um, long enough for oh, that health wow. potion to actually drop. Ooh. Okay, I got stuck on the arm. Okay, the RPG guy is gone now. That helps. I don't know how I'm still standing right here. This feels very precarious, yeah. but you know what? <laughs> we'll just do this. There we go. My own little world. Yeah, yeah good call. <laughs> I just like seeing all just the little... <laughs> shield and shelves with turrets is uh, very yeah. helpful. Yeah, it works. Well, that's a very good spot. Thing. I've spent just a few hours with this boss, mostly crying. Um, oh no. I'm in trouble. I think it's about to do its lift off attack. Oh, yeah. nope. no. Oh, no, it no, no, no. We have a chance. We have a chance. We have a chance. Yeah, if I can just, just not die. Watch out for the rock to come towards you. Okay, it's gone. Oh, okay. Now it's. Lift now off. he's doing okay. the lift off. Woo. So, yeah, they, this is a phase we. Uh, Usually, don't try to see. Um, th this is one of his attack sequences where he spawns a mech walker and just lifts himself up into the air and doesn't come down for a while. And you can't actually hurt the boss while he does that. You know what? I heard chat wanted more trifox. So that's what we're doing. Give him more trifox. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Well, I wanted some more trifox. If you can mage bomb that on its next passing. I know. Maybe. I need to just. Ooh, not fall off, apparently. Okay, it's gonna There's health the on the right side. Yeah, I know. No, get away from where, there. Where, where oh. am I? Where? Oh, you got Whoa. health there. That's nice. Uh, the mech walker died, that's why. Yeah, he dropped the full health potion. Just a little bit more. Okay, just shoot him. Just that little tiny bit. Just shoot him. There we yes. go. Nice. There we go. Yes. Nice. Right. nice. The time is coming up in just Del. a moment. But yeah, as you saw on Cell's fight just now, there's a lot of phases. <laughs> and time. G G. G G. Well, <gasps> congratulations, Oz. You won. But I have a feeling there's going to be another redemption race to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still rooting for Cell. <laughs> Grudge match, anyone? Grudge match, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I definitely really, really appreciated showing off TriFox. TriFox is honestly like a game that I am going to play casually, and I definitely am going to find a way to play it soon. Um, but in the meantime, does anybody have any shout outs that they would like to say for their channels or the community or anything of that sort? And we'll start with Cell. Yeah, so if you want to find me, you can find me on Twitch at CellCoothMind or over on YouTube at the TheCellCoothMind. Or Selco speedruns. Um, if you want to see me run this again, uh, you'll get a chance in just a couple of days as part of Frost Fatales uh, on the Monday. I think on the second run of the day. Anyways, on the Monday, Try Fox. It'll be just me. So if you want to see me do this again, hopefully not have too many that's never happened before moments. Um, come watch. It's gonna be a good time. I'll also be on Friday at Frost as well with a rhythm game. So. Lots of fun times over at Frost Hotels. All right. And um, as for me, I stream on Twitch at TV slash Osmorn. I am Osmorn on all platforms and social medias, and I'm most active on Twitter and Twitch. And um, I'm, if, have, have you ever thought to yourself, you know what, I actually would like exactly um, an hour and five minutes more of Osmorn. Um, well, guess what? Um, I'm going to be here on the next run, too. So, <laughs> oh. And then Half? All right, yeah, I am Half BC. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Half BC. Uh, I don't really uphold any other social media. Uh, I am currently still trying to improve my world record in this game uh, while also working on some other speedrun stuff. 
And the next time I run for a marathon will be on during Inditon. I'll be closing that out on the 12th of March, if I'm not mistaken. 12th of March. Yeah. I'll be the final run on the 12th of March. And you can come watch me then. Well, thank you all so very much. For anyone who wants to follow the community, um, definitely check out that speedrun link that is pinned in the channel. Um, I believe uh, the information to get more involved would be through that. Um, if you ever want to have you know, any more insight onto how to speedrun, I know that there is a Discord for the TriFox uh, actual like game itself, and then the speedrun community is there. Um, I appreciate you all being on the show, and I know that there was a pumpkaboo kind of hanging around, but hey, we got to listen to some Rue version of elevator coffee music, question marks, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you all for staying, and we are going to have some more Legally Cute with another race coming up with Osborne and Roadkill Revenge for Stonefly. Uh, stay tuned for more Legally Cute. Everybody, this is Cutie Rue. I am the host for Legally Cute. We have another race with Osborne, as you saw from the previous race of Trifox, the winner. And now we're going to have it with Roadkill Revenge. Uh, the game that we're going to be racing for is Stonefly. And I think that um, I'm going to just kind of go before we go into the game though i just kind of wanted to do a few reminders for everybody um the game so quick is hiring a full-time gdq hotfix manager if you'd like to work on growing our weekly content year round as well as a contract role for safety coordinator at live events go to gamesonquick.com for the jobs to apply feel free to apply if you're interested or please share with anyone that may fit either role if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also go to the Twitch channel if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, just one more second. I'm gonna figure out this other thingamabobber. Uh, so as I can see, do we have the streams? I'm thinking the stream is, like I see this like black, uh, it's into my soul and, uh, yeah. So as I'm looking at this black into my soul, I'm going to start contemplating what the meaning of a black hole is. When we look into black holes, what do you think a black hole contains? Do you think it is what an interstellar has where, where that movie is all about, um, you know, uh, it was such a great movie maybe I shouldn't spoil it for anybody. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely um, am really, really excited for this race. Um, I'm going to be doing a be beautiful introduction, Osmorne and Roadkill Revenge, if you would love to introduce yourselves. And then I will be happy to start the countdown when you both are ready. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Osborne. You may have remembered me from approximately 10 minutes ago. Um, I'm still Osborne, and now we are doing Stonefly, another amazing run. Ready? Hello, I am Roadkill Revenge. My pronouns are she, her. I run this game, Spyro, some other random indies, and I am super excited for this race to redeem myself from last time we raced. <laughs> yeah. Um, last race was an amazing time. Uh, we're going to see how it fares this time around. Yeah. Um, so, uh, all the explanation for the game is it's going to come when we start the run. So I guess, uh, Rody, are you ready to start? I am extremely ready. Wonderful. Could you, could you count us down? Yes, I would love to. On the count of three, two, one, let's go. All right. Good luck. All right, good luck to you as well. Um, so here, right at the start, we jump right in after skipping a few cutscenes um, to the world of Stonefly. Uh, this game is a really cute um, indie platformer slash resource management question mark game. Um, and it's about uh, this girl, Annika, whose dad is an engineer and who uh, she's starting out doing some little just tutorial tasks here for at the very, very beginning. Um, the one sort of unique thing about Stonefly is that we are in a world where everybody is... Uh, very tiny. And so we navigate through the world in these 
really cool looking um these really cool designed mechs called uh, they call them rigs in the game mm -hmm. um and yeah so we're just skipping cutscenes and getting through tutorial content right now um, and to start right. off, we uh, sneak off in the middle of the night to do a chore that we promised our dad that we were going to do and that we forgot to do. And of course, in order to do that, we are going to uh, run off and take a joyride in his really awesome um, legendary um, mech that's named after uh, their uh, Annika's mom. Um, and so we're going to learn a little bit about the game. As you can see, by default, we are flying around and we're landing on the ground to collect minerals. Um, over the course of the game, we're going to be needing a whole lot of different kind of minerals. Um, and that's also where part of the RNG of this game comes into play, is how many minerals spawn where. Um, but the nice thing about the tutorial is that it's um, almost, uh, it's the, probably the most deterministic part of the game in terms of minerals. And by the end, we're going to be looking for a 3,400 Limadot. Yeah, and speaking of Limonot, we see some here in this rock, and you also are getting introduced to e something called Encounter. Um, essentially, these encounters, whenever they're like required, a lot of them are required. Technically, you could skip this one by literally just physically going around the um, the trigger that activates it, but we do need a lot of this Limonot, and so we have chosen to keep it in the run. Um, aside from that, um, whenever you see an encounter like this, um, this is another set of RNG, just how the enemies are going to behave, whether or not they're going to group up, or just the, their general movement. Um, and the encounter will not end until you've gotten rid of all the hostile enemies. Um, what is considered hostile is dependent on the um, encounter that you're in. For example, those little tiny bugs we saw at the, at, the, at the beginning of this encounter, you will never need to fight them ever again in the game. They're just there for that specific encounter to combat to you, um, but they'll never attack you, and so you'll never have to fight them again. Um, and so, just depending on what encounter you're in, you'll just have to defeat a certain amount of enemies, or, or all of the enemies, until the, uh, until the area is completely clear. I got really good RNG on the second encounter, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I got decent RNG on the second encounter. One of these little guys just didn't want to cooperate, but yep. it's good. So I mentioned RNG. Like I said, there's RNG of where minerals spawn um, and in what quantities. Um, but most importantly, you have to deal with RNG of how the a enemy AI behaves. They are bugs, and they crawl around extremely randomly like bugs. Um, so um, that's just something that you have to deal with. And some of them are more annoying than others, and we'll get to see that uh, later on. This is true. Um, this specific wind area has weird cycles. Um... I'm sure Rody's already like. Already, yep, I'm but... on the last leaf now. Um, yeah, I'm about to get but... there in a bit. I got poor RNG, but that's fine. Uh, so this is an area. So these bugs can spawn in um, on any of these leaves. Um, mine were very spread out. Oz's are probably going to be perfect because that's how it tends to go. Um... <laughs> Ooh, I got four on one leaf and two on the other. <laughs> yeah, um, that's okay though. Um, the really cool thing about this run, and one reason I like it so much, yeah. is that there is a lot of RNG, but over the course of the whole run, it sort of averages out to still being pretty consistent. There are things that can give you big advantages, but overall, um, you know, it's really just about the platforming and about being able to adapt with finding stuff um, in one place and then not having to collect it later on and so forth. Okay. Um, eh, that was an okay leaf for me. I'm just going to finish up with this little line dot. I'm assuming you're already out. Yep, I just uh, just left the, the tutorial level. Um, okay, oh, okay, so, so lo and behold, um, on returning home, um, Annika, being the ditzy teenager she is, uh, forgot to lock the shed. And of course, somebody steals um, her dad's like prized possession, this, this rig named after her mom that's super precious to him. And so she leaves on a journey to go and get it back, to find the thief and return it home. And all along the way, she... Um, but friends, a uh, grasshopper who we love, his name is Kevin. Um, Kevin yes. is uh, is one of my favorite parts of the run, even though um, it's surprisingly difficult because he does not like to jump in a straight line. He zigzags everywhere, and it's very hard to sort of wrangle him um, and get him to go where you want, but he's behaving pretty well for me right now. Whenever you touch a single piece of geometry that isn't a flat surface, he just likes to go in any direction that isn't forward. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, they put you on this little twig um, to cross this big chasm um, with him, which is uh, fun and stressful, but um, he's good. We love Kevin, um, which, you know, is unfortunate because everybody say goodbye to Kevin um, because this is the last time we get to see him in the run. Um, yeah. He just, he just goes Kevin. and vibes on his own after this. 
Yep, he goes and lives his little grasshopper life. Um, and yeah, so this encounter um, is similar to the other one in that our, we do have to complete this one in order to uh, proceed. Um, and you might notice that there's some new minerals in the center of the arena right now. Um, but actually, I'm going to be ignoring them completely. That's because at the end of this encounter, we get a set amount of minerals, no matter how many I collect. Um, so it's not worth spending the time to try and gather them up. Um, but we are also introduced to a new enemy that are called uh, boom, boomlings or boombugs, which shoot these little artillery at us and can be a pain. But they also do friendly fire to other bugs, which is something that can really come in use later on. Um, okay, Ooh. so now I'm at camp and I'm going to buy something while this cutscene is playing and then walk over here to start an unskippable cutscene where okay. our friends that we just met from the Acorn Corps are uh, eventually going to be letting us have this old junker mech so that we don't have to kidnap grasshoppers anymore to move around. But we have to fix them first. Okay. Yeah, Shudiru, how are you liking this game so far? I love this game. It's so much fun to watch and... I still like, I, even though I have seen it before, it's still really nice to see again just because of the whole like aesthetics of the game, as well as it's just very interesting how you have to like kind of use resources in order to. It, it's it's interesting in that sense where I'm trying to still understand the speed run to that degree, but it's kind of fun to watch because of the fact that like. I don't know. It's just as an indie game, it's very calm, soothing. It's aesthetically pleasing, and as well as like, I like how you have like these bugs next. <laughs> yeah, I really love this game. It's super unique. It's one of the things that really um, like drew, drew me to it in the first place. Like, it sort of inverts the way you would expect a platformer to be, and that like we're flying around and can choose to land, um, and it's just really pretty. <laughs> also. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm now entering the uh, the first of three different sort of open world segments in the game. In general, the game is divided up into um, these like pseudo open world segments and also a few very linear levels. Um, this one's called Nightlight Briar, and this is also where the RNG really starts to play into the run. Um, because yeah. the minerals that are on these rocks, these rocks can have like no minerals on them. They can be just totally like I'm rich getting with like no minerals right now. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> different bugs can spawn oh, here. Life. So some bugs that spawn on these can be uh, a huge pain to try and get minerals without having to fight them. But by the end of the segment, I'm aiming to have 2,000 Loranite and 150 Dalium, which are two new minerals uh, that I'm needing here. And I'm actually um, where I need to be on Loranite. So I'm even though there's a bunch more on this rock, and even though I'm behind on Dalium, I'm just okay. going to go ahead and move on. Move on with my life. Uh, so am I. I actually got around 2,000 Loranite pretty quickly already there. Oh, nice. Um, and, oh, uh, well, we'll have to come back to this. I mean, I'm, you can... In this next section, we do have a, like another force encounter that we have to do. Um, we're trying to look for the Shoemaker, but instead there are enemies around the Shoemaker's shop. Um, spoiler alert, the Shoemaker isn't here. Um, because why would he be? Um, and... Um, on an we are introduced after to... all. Nothing yeah. goes according to plan. Exactly. Um, we are introduced to a new enemy. These long, uh, these long snout bugs. Um, they will shoot projectiles at you and um, are generally not that hard to deal with, especially if they're in groups and stuff. Um, ooh, yes, I got some filtered spring water. Okay, so so um, the little green like diamonds that you're gonna see us catch up um, is uh, stuff that can it contains. It contains like stuff that you can sell in order to get minerals, or you can contains um, stuff that you can use to upgrade um, special items. And if you get like items you can use to upgrade, it'll like save you on minerals that you don't need to collect later, um, which is really really important. So you want to make sure that you um, try and find as much of those as you can. Um, but during this cutscene right here, when we're moving around, we actually like um, can't skip it, um, but we can obviously go around and pick up more minerals while the cutscene is going on. Um, and so you can just use that to your advantage. But we did get one fast travel point that we're going to come back to later. Um, and now we're going to go straight into Genshin Trail. Yep, just um, now entering and, Genshin Trail as well. Yeah, um, right here at the beginning of Genshin Trail, there is another enc uh, encounter. And this is the first encounter that you're going to see us completely skip. Um, and this is um, a pretty easy skip so that you can do at home if you want to do it right now from the game. Literally just grab this checkpoint over here and then you quit and restart the file. And then since you've got the checkpoint, um, the uh, game will spawn you right outside of the uh, encounter, which is one of the easiest things to do in this game. And you're going to see me do it 
um, up ahead, but I know that Rody does a different strat. Um, that I just found a neutron off... epoxy. Oh, you found a neutron epoxy. Wow. Yeah. You're going to flex your good RNG on me this early? My goodness. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not going to get any good RNG later, so I have to take it while I can. You're right. Uh, okay. So what that means, uh, so basically what I just found was an item um, that normally I would be uh, gathering a thousand Lorenite in order to purchase a few of those. But now that means I need a thousand less Lorenite than normal because I just found one as a drop. Um, and by the end of Genshin Trail, just for just scale comparison reasons, um, I'm looking to have 8,000 Lorenite and 500 Dalium. So one Neutron Epoxy meaning that I need 1,000 less Lorenite is pretty huge at this point in the run. Exactly. Um, and this final encounter that we're going to be seeing here at the very end of the section is um, either I hate like this part. So it, much. It's, it's a it's a very um, annoying encounter, especially if the enemies don't want to don't want to cooperate with you. Last time I had a run uh, uh, in a marathon, this was like the perfect encounter in the world. Um, and it's probably wow, never okay. going to happen again. That's it is never going to happen again. The first one spawned exactly where I didn't want it to. Um, yeah, which is the I had, opposite I side of the map. I had two and two. They were both split. Um, okay, come here. Attack me. No, I, okay, I'll take done. that. I'll take that. So these I'm engine grubs is what they're called. Um, you can bait them into going to the other side of the map. Uh, generally, you want to bait them like so. It's going really okay. bad for me. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm out. Um, oh, God. I'm going to collect the lore knight that's here until I get enough or until they run out, whichever comes first. Um, because if you leave, you can see that there's tiny little bugs here, and if you leave this Lorenite unattended while you go do other stuff, um, the Lorenite will in fact be eaten by the bugs because they do, they just love crunchy stuff, apparently. Um, and so I am gonna come back to this section after I activate this cutscene. Um, get some trailers where, um, Henry, the guy that we saw at the Shoemaker shop, sent us in order to find the Shoemaker, and now we're gonna go talk to him. Um, and hopefully I can find some neutron epoxies or some other stuff that we can use to upgrade items later so that I can be um so that I don't have to collect as much Lorenite or other minerals. Um but now that we've activated this cutscene, I'm gonna come back into this uh area where we had the encounter and you probably saw there were some rocks that I un that I didn't uncover. Um if I did uncover them they would have shown me dalium and of course I didn't want the enemies to eat the dalium so I just kept uh I just kept it for for later. And now we're gonna collect it now. Am I gonna get enough? I Mm, I think we'd be just slightly short, but thankfully, Dalium itself is actually a very easy mineral to recover later. Um, am I going to be short? Actually, no, I'm not short. Okay, I thought I was going to be short, but I wasn't. Great. Um, we want around 500 Dalium outside of this section and around 8,000 Lorenite, which thankfully I have pretty much like just above that. Yep, I left this encounter a little bit earlier than I normally would, just because I heard that you were ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm caught up, and so I am going to be um, just short of Dalium as well, including the uh, the extra uh, Neutron Epoxy I got. So I yeah. only need to buy three, whereas he had to buy four. Unless yeah. I miscounted. So right there, what you're going to see me buy is the Dash ability, and that is self-explanatory, it's Dash. Um, and you also saw me sell a lot of the sub items that I collected throughout the game. Um, and we also... Um, did mining speed level one um, and pretty much anything with the word speed as Rody puts it, um, we want to be able to collect um, while obviously our movement itself doesn't really change much. The, 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 we do collect a lot of minerals in this run. And so we want to be able to mine them as quickly as we can. Um, this stump is usually used for backup, but I'm, I'm this engine grub is giving me the worst time. So I don't really want to deal with it anymore. Um, yeah, I just stopped for there. I had exactly like one, Laura and I deposit there, so I went ahead and took it. But yeah, sometimes that stump can ha can be totally full of minerals, and it can be so painful to leave it behind. But um, typically, the number of enemies that spawn sort of scales with the number of minerals in a location. Not like completely, but usually. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of risk reward in trying to get in and get out and get what you need in some of these. Oh, come on, game. Thank you. Messed up on a little bit of movement there, but that just means Rody can catch up. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably already caught up, to be honest. Yeah, I just got to the Blue Spirit Shadow Head. So, so did I. Um, essentially, we are chasing the thief still. Um, and we got a tip that he went to the Snowy Mountain. Um, but our mech is not equipped to handle the snow. So we freeze and our friends save us once again. Um, and now what we're doing is we're trying to build something that helps us go into the snow. Um, and in order to do that, 
we have to uh, get a new mineral that is not in this area, and we're tracking uh, oh, okay. essentially a bug called the alpha aphid. I'm having bad uh, luck on my aphid. I'm having tracks. horrendous RNG right now. Um, so essentially, that what we were doing right there is we're quitting out and reloading to refresh the location of tracks that lead us to the location of these sort of raid bosses, um, which sort of function as yeah. timed, uh, like just sort of, they're essentially, they're full of lots of minerals. Um, but we only have a short time to be on them, and we have to compete with lots of other bugs while they're up here. It took here. like fifth try, but I got both of them already. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm on it as well. Um, and by the end of this, I'm looking for um, basically all the Laurenite I need for the rest of the run. Oh, uh, is... uh, the thing happened. What, what uh, happened? If you, if you reload too many times, sometimes it'll introduce an ability that you've already collected and been introduced oh, yeah. to. So, um, yeah, I'm looking for around 13, 300 Laurenite. Uh, trying to remember the top of my head, 600 Dalium and 2,000 Dynatite. Um, so I'm doing pretty good. Do you not have the notes open? I do. I'm just trying to get better at not looking at them. Okay, fair, also, fair. every time I look at the notes, like, a bug tends to murder me, so. Um, <laughs> so these are actually pretty high-stress parts of the run, um, because, um, you know, you only have a set amount of time, and having to re-roll them, um, is slow. Um. It is. We will, so, we'll talk about re-rolling later. Um, Hopefully we won't have to talk about it ahead of time, but we yeah. might. <laughs> Hopefully. One of us might. I mm. might. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Because uh, RNG could just not be in our favor. Oh, I'm taking. I'm a lot having of a pretty decent. I'm having a pretty decent one. Honestly. Mine is going. Uh, okay. I think I'm at the bare minimums of everything now. I could either death abuse here, or I could just go ahead and get ahead to make my next uh, alpha aphid easier. Which is what I'm going to opt to do, which is what I usually do on the first one. Um, even though I might not have a choice, I think I'm about to literally die on accident. Oh, <laughs> Jump! Uh, oh god. I'm just going to get I what need, I can while I can. I need more Dynatite, come on. There you okay, go. Okay, I got way plenty what I needed. Um, all right, I have the bare minimum. I have, I have everything that was put in the notes. Okay, so now I am going to buy Arrow. Snowshell. Oh, you're like a solid 20 seconds ahead of me, at least. Yes, you that's already what I finished like to the, hear. If you already finished oh. the encounter. <laughs> and pull. <laughs> um, so a couple of those <laughs> abilities are required, but um, one of them, namely Arrow, is essentially just a go faster button. And you're going to see what I mean by that in just a moment. I love the, the competitive spirit right now. <laughs> it's actually really nice. Hey, I've okay. got to avenge my friend Cell, okay? We, we, <laughs> I, we have an agreement. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So this section is um, basically just a pretty straightforward climb, just platforming. Um, but as you can see, I can now do this new little movement tech where I do a little dip in the air. Um, this is a really, really important movement tech in this game, and you can do it after you get dash and arrow. Um, and it essentially allows you to get a whole bunch of forward momentum at the cost of height. You can't do it everywhere, um, but you can do it on places where you have like a long glide that you have that sort of height to deal with. Now, because the perspective is like, we have a fixed camera here and the perspective can make it really deceptive where you do have enough height. Um, sometimes you gotta be really careful about where you use it. Um. Okay. And during... Uh, find a guy who is just here without a mech, and we help him with the mountain. Um, yeah. And Annika has apparently never found, never like heard of the concept of finding herself, and so she's like, "What do you mean? Why are you here without a mech? What are you doing?" Um, and so, honestly, this is like uh, a part of the run that's like probably the most chill because you don't have to collect any. You just have to go to the top of the mountain. It's literally it. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and normally, um, so at this point in the game, you can actually really customize the colors of your mech. Really, like, there's some really cool customization options. But because we're going fast, we don't do that. Um, but it does make it very hard to see um, where we're at. So um, if you have light sensitivity, I do apologize. But I am coming out of the snowy section now, so it should be just about over. And I think Oz and I take the platforming through this a little bit differently. A little bit. Um, yeah. OK, there, there we go. go. I'm coming out <laughs> of the Sony section right now as well. Yeah, you're, you're, um, I think you're catching up a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, am I? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Don't, don't, don't tell her that. 
She doesn't uh, want to hear that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to take the training wheels off. <laughs> Right. Okay, so, so now we're heading into the next uh, sort of open world area, and this is my personal favorite area in the run. Is um, it? I I don't like this area. I feel like it's, <laughs> I don't like how inconsistent it is because either it gives you like every mineral that you want, or it gives you nothing. Oh, I don't mean in terms of the speed run. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you oh, in terms okay. of the speed run. In terms of just like the aesthetics of it and the uh, just the vibes, oh, wow. um, I really like it a lot. Um, but yeah, essentially what we're doing here is we're just continuing to chase the thief. Um, as you can tell, probably by the fact that our chapter is called The Thief. And just like before, we are looking for um, more aphid tracks along the way. Um, so far, um, OK, I'm also looking for minerals. Um, Limadot at this point is uh, a mineral that I'm basically just getting for safety, because um, I'm going to want a whole bunch of it here soon. And if I'm short, it means I'm going to have to be backtracking. So I'm essentially just looking for it as I go. Um, just to make the next alpha aphid easier. Um, so far, I've had really bad luck with aphid tracks, though. Um, so that's the thing. I am going uh, to have to I got two aphid tracks, but I will have to come back for another one. OK, I'm glad we both will anyway. Um, so because I got damage boosted there, I'm just going to take advantage of it rather than spend too much time looking for Limadot and continue to the next okay, area. OK, I'm in Bull's Hollow now. Um, and Bull's Hollow is an uh, area that you're going to see me do a lot of funky movement. Primarily because uh, we skip all the encounters in this in this section except for the very last one. For example, this one right here, you're gonna see me do um, a, like a giant circle, and you're like, "Why don't you just go in a straight line?" Well, if I did went in a straight line, I would have activated the encounter. So, yep. um, we I don't just did want the same that. Thing. Yeah, and so we do not want those things. And you're gonna be seeing me go over an encounter again right over here, and this time, you're gonna go physically over the encounter. Yep. Um. um yeah. Go ahead. We've essentially routed this so that you take some really interesting routes to these levels to avoid these trigger, these invisible triggers. Um, but yeah, it leads to um, this. Th most of the skips in this game are basically just routing around um, things like that um, and taking advantage of terrain like this um, to just get some height and go where we need to go. Um, however, this last encounter in this area um, is Ooh. with the bull beetles, which is actually not optional. Um, what just happened? <laughs> I activated the last encounter. Oh. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> so you're, you're a solid bit ahead of me right now. Yes. So, um, so you can actually go around the uh, trigger for this encounter fairly easily. Um, but you have to complete it in order to like load the next area, as far as we've been able to find so far. And this is another new enemy type, which are called the bull beetles, which um, they do a lot of damage. And but they attack on pretty consistent cycles, but really they mainly become a problem when they get sort of desynced from each other. Um, but luckily we have this boomling to sort of help us out, um, even though I ended up doing it pretty well without the boomling. Um, I'm going to wait out the cycle for this wind because I get hit by it way, way too often. So I'm just right. going to wait it out. And I'm about to start it right now. Hopefully I get good RNG to catch a little bit up. Quite honestly, that mistake of activating the the uh, the last uh, encounter, a bit of a foolish mistake because I did have a lot of space, but I just decided to cut corners too much. Um, but these guys, come on, attack me. There we go. You kind of want to bait them into attacking you. Um, and so hopefully all three of them will spawn right next to me. Uh, so I'm buying Bubble and Mining Speed. Bubble's an ability that is immediately going to become really useful, but first I'm going to have to backtrack into the Maple Canopy to look for more tracks, because I just had bad luck and wasn't able to get the tracks I needed on the way. But luckily I found one pretty quickly here. And that should be enough to, once I close this pop-up. Excuse me. What are you doing? I, oh my god. What? Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, Perhaps you've... My controller's bugging out. Hold on. Oh my god. Your controller is bugging out? Oh, please continue to bug out because right now I am <laughs> no very, very stuck. Okay, if you saw that, no, you didn't. Um, anyway, going into the aphid. <laughs> uh, so, just like before, I'm going to be aiming for a certain amount of minerals here. This one is, in my opinion, sort of the biggest choke point in the run. This uh, tends to be pretty there close in terms of getting the amount of minerals I need. Um, I'm aiming for 9,000 Limadot. 1,300 Phonicle, and 2,400 Dynatite. But I do have a new ability that makes it way, way safer than before. And that is, like I just mentioned, and I just used, Bubble, um, which just creates a little sphere of safety that I can freely walk around and not have to worry about bugs damaging me or uh, competing over the minerals in that bubble. But it does have a quite a long cooldown. So, um, And I am probably going to be using it 
on a cooldown um, because it's just that useful. And there's also okay. a bunch of different new types of bugs on on this aphid that they do not introduce, but are. Um, oh my gosh, I just got absolutely ping ponged around by some dudes. Um, anyway. Um, okay. Stress, stress. <laughs> Come on, Make no, I need I need you to be more stressed right now. <laughs> okay, I'm way ahead on Dynatite. Um, I've been focusing way too much on that. So I'm going to be trying to get my Lima Dot and my Phonical. I have such a bad history of being short on uh, Lima Dot, so I'm trying to really make sure that does not happen this time. Okay, we're going to see how that works. And... Okay. Uh, there we go. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay, come All on. right, almost there. Um, <laughs> if Double. we're not talking about just again, because this is like probably the most stressful part of the whole run. Okay, uh, let's. I need to get another thing. Come on, no. It's gonna be very close for me, but I think I got it. Yep, just those perfect. Are not, those are not words that I wish to hear at this hour, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah, that uh, that mistakes. Uh, that bull's hollow really put me back, but that's just the way. Are you kidding me? That is disrespectful, and I am quite honestly offended by what the game just did. It put a track, and then it despawned the track I was walking towards. Like, that is, I, you know what? I'm, we're, we don't need to talk about it. We don't need to talk about it. <laughs> okay, so um, what I essentially was trying to do right there was get a cutscene skip, which is a very, very new, or a very, very finicky skip uh, for this run. Um, essentially, right during this segment, I have to turn in a whole bunch of minerals in order to help Clara fix her mech. Um, but when you do that, if there is a text box open, if you turn it in with the text box open and you run back to your mech fast enough in order to start the next segment, uh, you can actually skip this cutscene, which is a huge significant time save. So Oz, if you get it, that's just going to be super easy for you. Oh, you didn't get it? I did not. No, I got very, very close. I got Ooh, very, very no, close. but I'm like just starting the uh, like the alpha because I was just so far behind on Optimal's Hollow. So I think even then you're still going to be like at the very least 40 seconds to a minute ahead of me. Excellent, excellent. So, um, yeah, so this is the next event called Big Oak, uh, which is what I would have been able to jump straight into if I hadn't done the, uh, if I had done the cutscene skip. Um, but this, th I like this level because there is one sort of finicky encounter skip at the very, very beginning. And I'm really bad at it, but I got it first try, <laughs> which is something that for some reason I struggle with. But I guess I'm finally figuring out the, the way oh my god please. to do that consistently but then the rest of the level is just a, a straight glide to the very end which i love because it really shows the power of this uh this like dive dash mm -hmm. ability um and yeah um so basically the goal here is to get one mineral like literally just one which is really funny to me um and it's just at the very very end of this level and done um, okay you having some trouble over there, Oz? A little bit. Uh, hold up. Phonical. Okay, yeah, I'm on. I'm good on Phonical. I'm. I'm gonna have to reroll. I'm not good on. Um, on uh, Lima Dot oh, at no. all. Oh no. Yeah, it's honestly with Lima Dot, it is so much better to be safe than sorry. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying oh no because of me, or are you saying oh no because of you? Because if you're saying oh no because oh, no, of you, because I... of you. I'm. I'm. Oh, I'm, I'm. I'm sharing my sympathies. <laughs> oh, you're. You're. You're thriving on your end. I'm sure. Uh, you know, I'm so, I'm doing something. Um, so this is another unskippable cutscene right here. Oh, well, I guess the other one is skippable. This one is unskippable as far as we know. Um, but essentially what we're about to do is we're about to rejoin with our friends, the Acorn Core, because we've met the thief. He had already sold the mech. And uh, now we are looking for um, more stuff to do, I guess. We were just really sad. And then now we're rejoining with uh, with our squad just to help them out and stuff because we're a good engineer i guess uh, but first before i do that i am going to be buying blink because it's required and it's also even if it wasn't required i would definitely be uh be picking it up um because blink sort of like dash is another movement ability but it happens instantaneously as opposed to being sort of an air burst forward and that is really um helpful uh, especially with this boss because 
some of these bosses attacks are uh, can be pretty hard to do dodge without blink, which I think is why that it's required um, for like progression reasons. But anyway, this game gives you so many different movement tools. There's like a lot of room for player expression and how you sort of use them together. We'll be seeing that a little bit later because I use some of them differently than Oz does. You're right. Um, all right. So you're currently in uh, Wind Mantis, I'm assuming? Yeah, I just entered Wind Mantis. So this all is right, the cool. first boss of the game, Wind Mantis. Um, big danger boy who drops lots of rocks and is a meanie head. But the good thing about these dropped rocks is that I can actually use them against him. Um, okay, so good news. I did get the skip. Nice, nice. So that's, uh, that's 40, 50 seconds more of time save that I could have had against you. The so. big thing that makes that skip hard is if you hesitate at all trying to make sure you get it right, uh, that's usually when you don't make it, <laughs> from my experience. So usually if you just go for it, um, you make it. Okay, so the Wind Mantis is going pretty good. You want the Wind Mantis to use the Ground Pound as much as possible, because that's going to cause more rocks to drop, uh, which we use to attack him. And there we go. Not too bad. I don't I like really how things to... are going well for you right now. <laughs> They're going pretty good. Um, I do appreciate how, uh, like, sometimes the rocks that fall will just hit him on the way down. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's really nice when, like, half the boss's HP gets taken down just by... Yeah himself so yeah bulls hollow in itself and the other the second alpha just did not treat me right um it was pretty pretty slow but it's the hardest part of the run in my opinion yeah. so that's just the yeah, way hopefully it is <laughs> end, hopefully end game uh treats me a little better uh okay so i'm gonna be buying a photosynthesizer and four alloy droplets if you're quick enough you can go over here and talk to the shopkeeper clara before this cutscene starts and you know, because you're basically just waiting on the cutscene other than that, so it's a really good way to just use that downtime effectively, because I'm going to be needing these items here in a moment. Mm -hmm. So, I just wanted to say in chat, we are talking about snuggling. There is a snug time. For I appreciate time, the snug time. So Let's go. Let's go. I More love snugs. I love to see it. Do we think we can have snuggles with the mech bugs? Mm. No, but you can have snuggles with my dog. You see her? Yeah. Oh, I want to snuggles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I know the name of the dog. I'm not going to say it on stream just because that, that, that's all the stream. But I love the puppers. Uh, workstation. All right. Uh... So this segment is another really pretty linear one. Um, I'm going to be taking some unintended pathways through it, though. Is it? Because we don't want to do encounters because they are long. Um, and this so I am going to be flying over basically the entire level. And you're going to see that um, you're going to see some stuff that's out of balance that is not a normally an angle you're supposed to look at the level from. But actually, it's faster to stay in bounds and just fly in a straight line than it is to try and do out of bounds stuff, even though it's very, very easy to get out of bounds this level, uh, which I think is sort of funny. <laughs> Yeah, these leaves are normal. It's Ooh, fine. Don't worry about Fine. it. Okay, I'm just now getting into Wind Mantis, which is unfortunate considering how where you are right now. Ah. Um, but like again, I don't want to speak too soon because we all know what could happen. Yes, I, I my hubris will uh, come back to hurt me. I'm certain. Um, okay, so we got through here. We skipped all the encounters in this area, and we're talking to. Uh, one of Davin's friends. Davin is one of the members of the Acorn Corps here, and he essentially is sending us on this wild goose chase to get this uh, this tool in order to build something we need in order to go to the swamp. Um, and he's being very shady about it. You might notice his dialogue is a little bit. Um, <laughs> he, he's he's definitely hiding something, basically. Uh, so we'll see what here in a moment. And I just have some cutscenes where we're talking about the thing I need to get and the new gear, which I don't mm, know if I would okay. call a tool gear, but okay. Oof. Uh, first things first, though, I am going to be buying a hardened crystal and spark design, which is going to help me go fast. Actually, I'm not going to do that yet. That's going to be later. Ah, spoiler alert, I'm going to be buying a thing called spark design. Um, okay, mm, okay. Wind Mantis is going very poorly. 
Oh no! The bosses okay. in this game can you not can stand on top of the rocks I'm trying to shoot you with? <laughs> I hate that when that happens so much. It's like, Ugh. please. Uh, yeah. The sometimes the physics with these rocks is also just non not ideal. <laughs> yeah. So now is the one time in this run where we actually do go out of bounds. I'm um this whole area goes around I an need encounter. You to not do this game right now, please. Thank you. <laughs> And as you can see, I'm hitting some invisible stuff. That's because I'm out of bounds. But you can just sort of dive under it in some very specific places uh, to get back inbounds really, really quickly. Okay. Um, I'm going inbounds, cutting across the area here. You can tell the camera gets confused about where I'm at because I'm not supposed to what? be over here. And okay. then okay. I'm going to be doing one more skip over another encounter, which that one is one that's very, very easy to clip on accident. So I'm very glad that I did not. And yeah, now we just do a giant climb. Do y'all like climbing tr trees, chat? Because if so, do I have the game for you? <laughs> we. Um, I'm gonna, is... I'm gonna Go post ahead. some, uh, you know, cute little emotes in chat. We've just been having a good, good fun time with Snuggies, and uh, I hope I appreciate... everyone is Snuggy. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah, <laughs> nice and cozy, more especially in this weather. Uh, I'm cold. <laughs> it's yeah. I'm from California, so if I'm but cold, you're cold in California. Else is cold. Yeah, I'm it on East Coast cold in California. What? Yeah, it yeah. gets cold in California. I'm just like I'm on East Coast. I'll dox myself. I'm on Georgia, um, <laughs> and it's it's like so hot here. I don't know why. Oh, it's so it's like it was so warm today. It's. It was gross. In February, it should not be this warm. Uh, <laughs> so shout outs to the developers for showing me how to do that encounter skip. Uh, when I first routed this game, I did this fight here, and it was the worst part of the run. It was a really long fight, um, so easy to lose so much time. It's a really hard fight, because at this point, we're sort of under-leveled. Not that this game has like levels, but um, you know, under-upgraded, under I guess. And so now we don't have to do it anymore. So yay. Okay, now I'm going to uh, buy the heart crystal. I'm currently reloading here because I'm actually short Lima Dot a little bit. Just a little uh -oh. bit. Yeah, like I said earlier, Lima Dot is the one, the most critical thing. And that's why I spent um, so much time in the, uh, in the maple canopy trying to make sure that I had extra Lima Dot because I do that all the time. And it is so frustrating to get to this point and have to backtrack. Uh, one thing that really, you know, differentiates a really good run from you know, like while you're learning this game is um, the first time you do a run without having to backtrack, you are you, it's not, success. <laughs> Can we not, please? I, I, I understand that lift and slow are Billy said. I, wow, okay, it's introducing them multiple times to me. I love it. What's, go, what's going on? It's, it's doing the thing. It's doing the thing where it's like if you reload uh, the game too many times, it'll like re, it'll, it'll oh introduce no. you to the, the, uh, the mechanics like three times over. Yeah, if any if anybody is like a you know like a router or a glitch hunter out there, if anyone could figure out a way to not have to deal with those pop ups, I would literally pay you money. <laughs> I don't know how much, but <laughs> no, I found a way to not deal with the pop ups. I'm just forgetting to do it. Wow. Remember? Well, maybe I'll um, pay you money. Like I told you, um, if you like pull up the pause menu while the encounters are supposed to happen, then the game won't read them. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, um, I got the quick thing, but hold up. But anyway, I... so now I have all, basically all the movement tech in this game. I picked up Spark, which lets you, if you use it at the bottom of a lift ability, um, it lets you get a whole lot of height, which, like I mentioned earlier, the ability that um, lets you go really fast, the dive, requires height. So anything that lets us sort of just get height is really, really valuable. Um, so now I'm entering this area called the Meyer Outskirts. Right now, it's plot-wise, we are in the swamp looking for... Um, Looking for, I, I honestly should really play the game casually because like I feel like some of the plot details are lost on me. Um, I know that the the Acorn Core is also looking for a mech, um, and so we're just helping them, I guess, and just looking around the marsh, sort of just because. So uh, this area, we've heard there's some other people um, around in the marsh that we're trying to like touch base with and just ask around basically for more information. Uh, but I'm doing a lot of movement here to get lots of height 
and to go around encounters. Um, normally, you're supposed to be going down there on those rocks and fighting some enemies, but it's pretty easy once you know the way uh, to go around them. All right, so here's some some other dudes. They're going to tell us, go away. And so <laughs> we're going to uh, find more um, more information on our own. And so earlier, this is why I went and uh, got this checkpoint uh, for Rocky Pass earlier, even though it's not quite on the way. Um, it's useful for a couple things. First is through fast traveling to right now in order to get to this guy called the Hermit. Um, the other thing it's useful for is if we have to re-roll to look for alpha tracks, which I got really lucky and found all of my alpha tracks on the way. So I don't need to use it for that. Um, it's something you saw us do a little bit earlier in the run as well when I was um, at the very first alpha. Mm -hmm. So I want this everyone to oh, just, go ahead. I want everyone to put money in chat that um, the last two minutes of the run will be very, very bad to Roadkill Revenge right now. <laughs> you she, is, will. she is so far ahead right now that it's <laughs> truly, truly disheartening. Um, but continue, Rody. <laughs> So basically during this segment, you can do two things. You can either look for pyotite, which is the last mineral that we're going to see, and the one that we're going to need a whole bunch of, or you and or you can death abuse to end this cutscene early. It's the only way to end this very, very long cutscene. Um, unfortunately, though, I had pretty bad luck. Um, bad luck in that I'm trying to make dangerous enemies spawn, and the only enemies that spawned were ones that barely do any damage. Um, so at this point, I'm probably not going to be able to death abuse here, which is normally what I try and do. Um, but alas, alas, we do, we have to we have to just sit here and watch this very very long cutscene. Um, I'm still trying to death abuse, but at this point, I should probably just wait out the cutscene because um, it's pretty close to being over now. But as you can see, it is quite long. So being able to have the right enemy spawn that can help you death abuse um, is nice. Um, and you can go off the map to do damage to your mech, but it's very, very slow because whenever you go off the map, it essentially just respawns you somewhere that is the last piece of ground that you touched. And it does a tiny bit of damage, but it's not enough that's really worth just uh, falling off repeatedly. Um, so there we go. So that was that cutscene. And now we have to get... Um, oops, I just bought something I didn't need. Love that for me. Um, <laughs> but now I'm going to be doing this final aphid. All right, so again, the thing I need here is a uh, pyotite, and I need 800 pyotite, which is a lot. Because one thing you might also notice about these different minerals in the game is that they mine at different rates. Um, so Lorenite, for example, is one that we get a whole lot of over the course of the run, and it mines very, very quickly. Whereas pyotite and dalium mine very, very slowly, but you normally need them in smaller quantities. But I need 800 pyotite, even though it mines really slowly. So this is uh, this can be um, this can be either really, really good or really bad. <laughs> I was ahead on pyotite here because along the way and a bunch of other places in the run, there's a couple of little secret stashes of pyotite that I did was able to pick up. But yeah, eight 800 is a lot, and I'm hoping to get around. Um, halfway there and then i'm going to be doing something that uh, you might have seen oz do earlier even if he didn't explain it which is i'm going to be re-rolling this um, encounter so the the uh, tracks that you need in order to unlock these um are rng and they take a while to find and to get you to be able to come back to do another alpha if i don't get enough pyotype however one thing we learned that got left in the game is that you can actually just quit and reload. And if you do that, you keep the minerals that you gathered, but um, you get to start the encounter over again. So that lets us have a whole nother um, timer, basically, to get what we need. And as you can see, these are very stressful. So being able to not have to do this all at once is nice. <laughs> Even though okay. I must say, I do appreciate that the soundtrack that they have that we hear probably the most in this run is an absolute bop. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that reroll just because there wasn't a whole lot of pyotite left. If there's not any left, I, I can't mine it, so. Yeah, that's kind of a, you, you have to mine it. Yeah. Right. So How's it going, Oz? 
I am in my outskirts, and thankfully I collected enough alpha tracks the first go around, so I don't have to backtrack for it. Nice. Oh my god. That's a good plan. Ugh. Sneezing. My goodness. Um, uh, bless you, question marks. Thank you. <laughs> um, and currently, um, I am hoping that, I mean, literally, here's the thing, like, even part of me is still having hope, um, even though it's likely that I'm not going to win, but I said that the last time we had a race, and we all know <laughs> and that. Then look, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm sitting at 600 Pytite right now. It's looking like I'm not going to have to re-roll this again, which is really nice. The least times... Uh, I, the ideal situation is this, is that you'll usually have to do it twice. Um, oh no, my legs. My legs I got broken. I can't fly. Oh no. Oh no. I'm getting bullied as soon as I said I was doing good, so maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting close here. Uh, one thing that I don't know, I haven't had happen this run. Uh, but I have had happen before. Sometimes you can get a little, um, a sort of glitch that we've been tentatively calling a uh, a scoop, where if you interact with the wind gusts a certain way, um, it will just automatically collect the entire uh, mineral deposit at once, which is really fast um, and really, really useful. It's very, very finicky, though, and so far we haven't really figured out a way to directly... Um, replicate it and i haven't gotten one of them so that's something oh that can definitely God. speed up this segment i'm almost there though and 800 we're good so now i just have to wait until the timer is over like i said i could death abuse but i'm not going to because the timer is almost over oh my, anyway. i got the death abuse like immediately for the cut permit cutscene. <laughs> oh nice <laughs> that's uh, amazing okay i bought a bunch of extra stuff for some reason now Sorry I'm just an that. entire alpha behind you. That is it. <laughs> That's all. OK, so now I'm going to be buying, doing the last uh, required upgrade, which is the decoy. It's something that is used to distract bull beetles, but it's not something that is really used for the run. Uh, and I'm going to be dumping all of this pyotite 10 at a time into this, uh, this hole here. And there we go. I am now ready to head to the auction, which is the final level. And the auction is uh, probably, I mentioned that earlier was the scariest section of the game. I would say that the auction is probably the scariest individual level in this game because we have a new hazard that gets introduced, which is these raindrops. As you see, there are uh, these little red targets that show up over the course of the, just everywhere. And that essentially is telling us where the raindrops are about to fall. But if we get hit by a raindrop, it causes us to immediately fall all the way down with, and there's a lot of out of bounds, or not out of bounds, but like water underneath us that respawns us. And so because I'm taking this really long glide all the way across the map, if I get hit by a raindrop, it takes me all the way back to the beginning of that glide. But I got lucky and didn't get hit by any raindrops today. <laughs> and now I have a bunch of pop-ups to deal with. <laughs> Uh-oh. There we go. I'm having a bit of a control issue, but hopefully that fixed itself. <laughs> Mm, 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 game, please, please, please. Wee. Okay, so after all that, after collecting all of those minerals, it turns out that we weren't allowed to go to this auction anyway. This is what we were collecting the minerals for, to be able to participate in this auction. And so we're just going to break in anyway. So all that work getting the uh, the pyotite, we end up not <laughs> we end up not using it at all, which is sort of funny. Um, mm. Fun fact, Oz, I don't know if you knew this, but in the very first build of this game, you had to get like three times as much pyotite. And they eventually what? patched it and nerfed it, yeah. My um, goodness. <laughs> yeah, so, which I'm grateful for, because 800 is already a lot. It's... I might have to reroll this three times. Um, so... Oh my god. I just got a massive damage boost. I don't know if what... That, uh, dare I say it, has never has happened never before. Happened before. <laughs> uh, Oz, I just jumped on the top of the, like, garage containing Chrysa, and it jaboosted me about 800 million meters into the air. Uh, I didn't Dang. even have time to explain that, uh, <laughs> the, how difficult and finicky that segment is, because I was just so sh um, in awe over that damage boost I just got. Um, anyway... 
gonna be clipping that later. <laughs> So yeah, basically, um, we found this mech that the Acorn Core was looking for, and it turns out it was the very self-same mech that got stolen from from um, Annika's dad at the very beginning of the game. And so now she is sad, and she can't decide if she wants to be loyal to her new friends or to uh, her her, uh, her dad. But she ends up sneaking off and stealing it once again, and it's all very sad. Um, but she gets caught, but she runs away anyway. And uh, now it's almost time for the final boss, and depending on how well it does for me, the run could be ending pretty soon, or not at all very soon. <laughs> so, um, basically, this boss has two stages, and it's very, very similar to the uh, the first boss, the Wind Mantis. And as you're about to see, just a moment, it is the Dragon Mantis, who is just like the first oh boss, god. but way meaner. Oh my god! And and just. The arena honestly makes it a lot more difficult because now there is a big hole in the center of the arena, which makes it way harder to hit the rocks and actually hit the boss. But just like before, we want him to do a ground pound um, like this as much as possible to help drop more rocks for us to use and hopefully not get hit because he hits. Oh my god. What? That's what happens when I say don't get hit. I immediately get hit. Uh, come on. Please. <laughs> Okay, I took I dropped a bubble there. Normally I don't use bubble in this segment, uh, but I was I got scared. Um, and now Please the boss continue is to get scared. very strange. Is the boss glitching? Hold on. Oh, oh, are you about Cursed? to say things that were gonna make me happy? Please. Cursed. Hello. Yeah, the boss is stuck. Um, this Ooh. is awesome. Yo. I can't hit him. So I guess I'm gonna be rerolling the first half of the boss. <laughs> that is music you... to my ears. Oh my god. Continue to I, do these things. Once again, never happened before, literally ever. <laughs> so, uh, essentially, what looked like happened there was he was flying around and got stuck under the arena and couldn't get back up. And so I couldn't hit him with rocks because he was under the arena. Now, which is funny because during the second half of this boss, we can skip the entire phase by getting him to basically do that, but it doesn't work on the first half, so... Um... Sad, sad day. Come on, I would, I would appreciate him continue to um to have difficulties. Well, it is uh, you know, this boss has not been very nice to me lately. Let me tell you. Well, Ooh, let me tell you. That ya. is truly unfortunate so, for me. Just to go ahead and talk about the uh, second phase skip. Essentially, what I'm going to be doing is manipulating the boss to get into a landing animation so that it lands off the arena and just triggers the uh, end of the game, basically. Assuming I can even get past this first phase, I am taking a lot of damage and getting body blocked by these insects. It can be a very big pain that these insects that wander around the arena um, can actually uh, body block the boss. And I'm taking so much damage. This is going so bad. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate you throwing. For throwing content, I'm you throwing know. for content. Okay, we're on the second phase. Let's see how the skip goes. Okay, so far I didn't get it first try. Mhm. Mm Come on. It's a very finicky skip. Oh, not again! Flashbacks yes. to our last Flashbacks. phase! Flashbacks! Yes! Yes! Do it! Keep going! Keep going. Cursed! <laughs> oh, oh, unless... I got it. I got it. Okay. Oh, Time is coming up right... now. <laughs> okay. Jeez. I got so scared when I didn't get it for a try. <laughs> what, uh, what was the final time on that one? Um, I don't know. One second. It is 54.27. 5427. Nice. Nice. My not God. too terrible. Oof, I feel like a lot went wrong in that run, but um but it was still a really <laughs> fun run. That's one thing about this game that I love is that um more than any of my other speedruns, this is a game that even if I'm not doing PB attempts, if I'm just playing it, um it's just a fun speedrun. <laughs> it's a good time. Thank you all for the GG's in chat. All right. And now this is the part of the run where we just watch Osmore do the same thing again. All right, um, Cell, if you're out, if you're watching, I did this for you. <laughs> dedicated to Cell. Before yes. 
before um before the match, uh, Cutie Roo was just like, Oz, I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna root for you this time," and I'm just like, "Are you sure, Cutie Roo? Are you sure about this that that decision?" Um, and she was just like, "I gotta spread the love," and I'm just like, "You're not you're you're, you're spreading the love in the wrong places. <laughs> you, you in fact did not win that bet, but it's okay." <laughs> Honestly, I I believe all y'all should win in my heart. Aww. The if real winner was the I'm friends just... we made along the way. Yeah. If that was a 54 RTA, that is actually not, like, I'm not as behind as I thought. Or at least I'm, the, the timer isn't currently where I thought it was. I thought this would be, like, a high, like, uh, like not even, bare, like, a barely sub-hour kind of run, honestly. But, <laughs> excuse me. Krissa, please, work with me here. Thank you. Yeah, so if you're in the part with Krissa, um, that segment is actually very, very difficult because you essentially have to be tethered to this vehicle, which is something you haven't really had to do in the run up until this point. And getting attacked by enemies or getting hit by a raindrop or just dashing too much um, will cause you to drop uh, the mech. And if you do that, a timer will pop up. And if you don't get to the end of the the, the level by the end of that timer, it will reset you to the beginning. <laughs> and, and sometimes when the mech gets dropped, it will drop like off the side of the map. Um, luckily, uh, as Oz discovered, if even if you're not holding the mech, if you get to the end before the timer, you can still continue. But it's uh, it's it can be very pain. <laughs> mm-hmm. All Honestly, right. though, seeing this game, though, it's really, really inspiring for me to play just because, well, it's nice that I, I, I do want to play Trifox and I want to play Stonefly. So maybe <laughs> I could like play back to back on like a handheld or something like on my Steam yes. Deck. Because <laughs> I know that like these are my totally like me games, 100%. Um, you know, we need like, uh, another speedrunner if you'd like. <laughs> yes. Well, I I honestly love indie games, and I I like the there was another game that Oz was uh, telling me about, and I'm definitely interested in. Um, but definitely, it's kind of nice to have like indie speedrunners kind of come together and play the games too, because like there's so many games out there. Yeah. So many. Yeah, th- this game, I definitely really recommend. I mean, obviously I'm biased because I routed the game, and so obviously I love it a lot. <laughs> but um, it's a really fun casual game that was really underrated. It sort of flew under the radar. Um, it's got some interesting control scheme stuff going on, but once you figure it out, it's a very fun and fluid game. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's a fun f- speed run. Yeah. And here's the message for everyone out there. If you like find a game that only has like one runner, you have like no idea how much it would mean for the other runner if you started running the game. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I remember Roadkill being very happy when she saw that I did a speed run of this game. Yes, and... he messaged me, and I was just like, "Please, please help! Let me help you, <laughs> please." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, also, um, if you haven't seen it before, the mech customization is really cool. I'm just gonna be messing around with pretty colors. Oof, wow. Okay, this is this is a fight. This is one of the fights of all time. <laughs> I believe in you. I believe. It's actually pretty cool to see the like the um what all of those rocks went in every direction that wasn't the, towards the dragon mantis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Come on. All now, right. if if you were to have anyone who wanted to learn how to speed run this, what would you recommend would be like the first steps? I'd say definitely play it casually first and get a feel for sort of how it works. Getting used to the way the, the right. fixed camera works in different levels and just getting a feel for just, you know, the Ooh. game in general. Um, In general, if you're looking to learn any speed run, I would recommend doing that just because... Um, if you like the game, it's way more fun. <laughs> um, but other okay. than that, once you're trying to play it, just uh, I have a lot of guides written up. Feel free to take a look at those. Uh, there's also uh, we've been talking a lot about numbers and like oh, thirteen thousand three hundred and whatever. Um, there's a lot of oh, guides that make first that try? easier. First try. Oh, first try. I've been getting that first try so often. <laughs> uh, and time. It's time. Yay! Nice. Nice. What was the RT on that? Question mark. Uh, just one one hour and three seconds one hour and three seconds oof just barely sub hour but 
It's fine. It's good. Um, you know what? I am. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm really. Ex- I was really excited to show this off with Rudy because I know that she is absolutely amazing at this game. And as anticipated, you know, I didn't want to like buy my tongue too soon because uh, I knew that the final boss could give us some troubles. But um, I, I had full confidence that going into this, that like Rudy was just gonna wipe the floor with uh, <laughs> with this one because like we've had close races before. But typically speaking, she's just generally faster than me. And I knew that there would be a moment in which she would just destroy me. And that moment was now. So uh, <laughs> good good job, Brody. Uh, super proud of you. And thank you. you're really good at this game. Thank you for reminding me of this race. And thank you, everybody, for watching. This is a game that I love to show off. And um, it's been a good time. So thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. And as uh, was mentioned in chat, thanks for the entertaining runs. And thanks for introducing us to these adorable games. They were both yeah. adorable, and uh, I appreciate more cozy emotes, please, <laughs> to celebrate. Yes, give us more snug times. Uh, <laughs> but uh, definitely, um, I, I just wanted to say, if there's any um, shout outs that you both would like to say for anyone who wants to get involved or um, have any questions on where to go if they want to learn a speed run, as well as um, you know where to follow you and anything like that, I will start with Oz. Okay, so first of all, if you're going to learn the speedrun, um, there is one of two people, in, there are two people in the world that speedrun this game, and they are both on screen right now. I'm going to give you a wild guess at which one you should DM if you want to learn the speedrun. <laughs> um, the answer is Roadkill Revenge. You should you should DM her, because uh, she made the resources for this game, including all of the different, um, um, like, uh, resource uh, markers that we have. Um, she was the one that completely routed, essentially, like, the entire game. Um, I like found one or two things to improve the speed run, but like she essentially just made it from the ground up. And so this is as much as I like showing this game off. I, at the end of the day, I do think this is like her game. Um, and so I highly recommend uh, checking her out. Um, and as for me, I said earlier, my Twitch is Osborne. My Twitter is Osborne. Those are my two most active platforms. If for whatever reason you want to follow me on like literally any other social media platform, just Osborne, you're likely to find me there. Um, but aside from that, um, that is pretty much it. I do want to say one more thing, but I will want Rodi to do her plugs first. All right. Well, yeah, I'm Roadkill Revenge. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Roadkill Revenge. Where I'll stream this game and my other main speed game, Spyro, um, here and there. I, uh, yeah, if you're interested in learning the run, like Oz said, feel free to reach out and feel free to check out some of those resources I've made. Um, and I'm also always excited to talk about it with people. Um, if you want to see more of Stonefly, I am going to be showing this off at Frost Vitals, um here very, very soon. Um, and I'm going to be very, very excited to be showing off more Stonefly to y'all. So if you w- just want to see more, you can, uh, you can find it there. Yeah, wonderful. Um, and one thing, one last thing that I did want to say was that, as many of you may know, um, GDQ submissions for SGDQ open tomorrow, um, or today, if you're within an Eastern time zone or later. Um, and I just wanted to say, if, um, if like, at any point you have even considered contempl- or contemplated a minute amount that you, uh, about whether or not you should, admit, you should submit, I think that you should. Um, if you have any speedrun that you want to show off Submit. The worst thing that can happen is that they say no, and like I, and they're going to be doing online runs and on-site runs, um, whether or not you're going to be able to go to Minnesota or not. And so, just any excuse you have, you, you you're not you you think you're not fast enough, or you're not you know, like a world record holder, or or anything of the sort. Just I want you to ignore all of the excuses and just try and submit um, whatever you think would be good, because chances are I think you have a higher chance than you think of getting in. I mean, I didn't think I'd get in, and now, look at me, like, I've shown off, I've been fortunate enough to show off at, like, three mainline GDQs before, and so, you could be that as well. That's what I wanted to close off on, and, yeah, Cutie Roo, you can take it away. Oh well, thank you. That was, honestly, thank you for uh, saying that. I, I really appreciate you saying that, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's always good to just take that chance. Um, Trust me, it's it's always worthwhile just to try. Um, I do appreciate everyone who has been on the show, uh, and definitely appreciate uh, you, Oz, and Roadkill Revenge, and Cell, all of y'all, and Half. 
Uh, Y'all been amazing, and I appreciate you for all the races. It was a lot of fun. Um, You did take the win for Trifox, so we could celebrate, but Mm -hmm. Roadkill Revenge did take the win for Stonefly. Now we just have to go on Grudge Match and (laughs) hash it out there. We'll have Um, have Oz do both at once next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just do Yo, like Bro a... Sanjay, hit us up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Well, uh, stay tuned. We do have a more legally cute for another cute indie game called Blue Fire, done by Glint. And I am very, very excited to see this one. Um, but stay tuned, everybody. We're just going to take a short little break. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to some more Legally Cute with the host, that's me, Cutie Roo. I am excited for the next game, but before we get into it, I just want to do a few little reminders with events that are going to come up, and there's actually quite a few, so I'm looking forward to all of this, uh, especially this one. The next all-women speedrun event, Frost Fatales 2023, is coming up this weekend, starting on February 26th this Sunday. So if you are interested, go to gamesdonequick.com and check out the Frame Fatales. If you want to learn more about the charity, you can use the command in Twitch chat to find out more. I will be there. I will be doing things and I will be doing the stuff and things and it's going to be a lot of fun. So definitely super, super excited for Frost Fatales. Um, now another thing to kind of, you know, just point out with what's going on with more events that are happening. Games Don't Click is returning to PAX East 2023 on March 23rd through the 26th. We are looking for marathon style speed runs to showcase at the event. So if you're interested in the game submissions, they are open now until February 26th. Use that command in Twitch chat to submit your runs. Also, just a little bit of a nice reminder. GDQ is hiring a full-time GDQ hotfix manager. If you'd like to work on growing our weekly content year-round, as well as a contract role for safety coordinator at live events, go to gamesdonequick.com for the jobs to apply. Feel free to apply if you're interested, or please share with anyone that may fit either role. Alrighty, we have another very, very adorable, cute game, and maybe maybe I should say it like this, but a cute runner, too, because I saw it in chat. Cute. <laughs> you are officially titled cute um but definitely excited uh it's blue fire done by glint um just say hi everybody to the chat and everything like that glint hi hi everybody uh, my name is glint i'm gonna be showing off blue fire for you today cool 3d platformer that came out in 2021 developed by roby studios and published by graffiti games and i'm very excited because it's very cool cute and very action-packed so excited i'm super super like i i really am looking forward to this run um i remember when the game first came out and then like when it was a development of the runs and so it's going to be really cool to see what it's like now uh whenever you're ready to yeah for sure um um it's going to just be on enter here so three two one go uh there's a pretty long cut scene at the beginning of this game it's a bit loud at the beginning so i'll wait a second to talk Uh, okay, I'll give a quick explanation of the background of this game, lore-wise. Basically, it's still so loud. (laughs) Uh, There's these six gods, and they're all brothers. Everything's going great, until the sixth god got really upset with everybody and decided that he's going to rule all of everybody, and he's going to succumb to his power and kind of overtake everything. Uh, But in that process, he got overtaken and became what we call the Black Shadow, um, after that, a long civil war between the gods happened, and the war lasted a thousand years. Towards the end of that, the rest of the gods decided to come together and form a castle known as Penumbra, and that's where we are. And uh, everything was going fine there for a bit, but now it's going a little sour, and we're going to try and fix things up a little bit. So we play as Umbra, and it's kind of like a cool little 3D platformer. Um, I would say that it's like a 3D platform with cool dash and movement mechanics with inspiration from Zelda games and other metroidvanias like Hollow Knight. You're going to be getting things like spirits and other abilities throughout the run that will accelerate the pace of the game. And there's like cool little combat sections as well. 
we're going to be getting one of our first items here. It's not a particularly useful one, um, but we'll be getting shield. Combat in this game is pretty cool. Uh, it's nothing super special. It's just a lot of trying to optimize grouping enemies like this so that you can accelerate combat nice and quickly. Try to kill everything all at once. Getting shields. And an old key. We'll be doing our first of a couple saving quits throughout the run. Saving quits will put you back to your uh, last save point. They're not super scattered around. Uh, there's very few of them, but usually a lot of the time they'll end up speeding movement up a little bit. So we'll be doing a couple throughout the run. Uh, we're going to be heading over to a locked door, and then we'd be introduced to a character um, named Vaughn. But since the developers were super kind and introduced uh, the ability to skip cutscenes, I should be skipping the cutscenes. So we won't see Vaughn at all, uh, unfortunately, but we will be introduced to him again a little bit later. Vaughn kind of explains that we're like the last hope uh, for Penumbra to kind of like solve all the problems that are going on. And we enter our first void. Um, first and only void, actually. These voids are cool little sub areas. Uh, you can kind of think of them as like tests of your platforming skills. Um, they kind of force you to get used to the abilities that you unlocked over time and stuff like that. This one's pretty easy. You just want to make sure that you catch this cycle. That's all that really matters. There is something you can miss a little bit later, so I should have got that checkpoint, but we should be okay. It's very rare that it happens. Kind of speed through. You kind of like think about them as the like hat and time sub world things or Super Mario uh, Sunshine. Uh, you get these void souls in these as well, which would give you extra spirit slots. So you can think of those as like charms from Hollow Knight. Um, and you also get an extra piece of HP, but we don't need more HP than we have right now, so we won't be doing any more voids throughout the run. So I have a question. Is this yes. game, what what kind of got you drawn to this game? Is it because of like Hollow Knight or, or just like, you know, it was just a cute indie game that came out? It's definitely a very unique game, and I did play it casually. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of games that have, oops. I'm just going to do this semi-hard skip. There we go. Big, not essentially sequence break, but uh, biggest skip of the run so far right there. Uh, but I got drawn to this game because of its movement. The movement in this game is super fun. Uh, it's very snappy, kind of like Hollow Knight's movement, which allows you to do like really cool stuff. Um, and yeah, the lore and like kind of other mechanics that you get throughout the run are really nice as well. But yeah, the skip that I just did um, allowed us to get the spirit uh, named Fire Keeps tier uh, way earlier than we're supposed to. We basically kind of dashed into some terrain, which gave us a little bit of vertical height, and then we used some coyote time to jump up and collect a spirit, which happens to be the spirit that gives you double dash. And since some of you are speedrunners, you might see where this is going. It might break the game a little bit to have the ability to dash in the air twice this early in the game. Uh, but it leads to some really cool skips, so I'm excited to show those off. We also unlocked a fire shrine. Uh, I think it was like as benches or fires from um, like Dark Souls or Hollow Knight. We're going to be able to warp to those a little bit later in the game as well, so we're going to have to come back here a little bit later and do another objective. Okay, and that is basically the end of Firekeep. We head out here and we get into a cutscene with Nuos, but again, since we have a nice cutscene skip, we can skip this cutscene and head on out of here. Nuos basically just comes, uh, asks us to come save him from the Forest Shrine. And then we head into Arcane Tunnels. Arcane Tunnels is really cool. Um, some of you might know about Coyote Time. If you don't, it's basically a uh, system that developers will add to their game to make platforming feel a little bit better. And this game has something a bit interesting and a little uncommon, uh, which is infinite coyote time. So basically, if I ever walk off a ledge, specifically kind of like walk off, uh, I'll be able to jump in the air again. You'll see it here. I'm going to dash off and I'm going to be able to do like a grounded jump in the air way later than you might be able to expect. It almost looks like a double jump. Uh, and we can use that in a lot of different places to speed sections up. Also got a new pair of swords that I'll quickly equip. 
and we're going to be getting our second spirit. We're only ever going to get two spirits in the NA% run. Um, the second spirit, Aerial Rat, gives us a little bit of extra damage while in the air, which will be useful for the bosses. Whee! Um, something you just noticed there. Most of the doors in this game actually open from the top. So something you can do to save a little bit of time is try to sneak over the top of them. We can't necessarily do that all the time, especially sections like here where we only have a single jump. Um, but in other sections, it'll be very useful. This is Orip, the person we actually skipped by jumping over the fence. We ask him to fix the elevator. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the money to, so we give him an IOU, and he's like, you can pay me back later. Hint, we don't pay him back later. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we I, just... I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, basically we just don't pay him back later. And uh, that's about it. He's just a nice guy, decided to fix the elevator for us. We love that. We got another pretty big skip here. We use one technique that's like used nowhere else in the run. Uh, I used to call it a slash dash. Basically, Umbra has a three hit combo on the ground, which gives you a little boost and plus double dash. We can use that to cross this gap. And then we can head up these by just barely ledge grabbing and then doing a direct dash, bonking, dying, not intentionally at all. So we have to climb all the way back up there and try again. This one can be a little finicky. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to the other side. That's fine. Just a little bit of time loss, but that's okay. Get across and then enter this combat arena, which is going to give us an ability that, again, we're definitely not supposed to have right now, um, but it's going to be extremely useful and basically all platforming and combat. I saw these enemies, they kind of creeped me out a little bit. Just a tiny yeah. bit. Just a little bit. Not very comfy, that's why I'm getting rid of them right now. <laughs> Perfect. And we're going to get the Whirlwind Hook, which gives us a charge spin attack. So if I do a char uh, melee attack on the ground and I hold attack, I will slowly over time turn blue. And that is going to give us a spin attack, which almost works as like a double jump, um, which is extremely useful and is going to allow us to skip a lot of platforming stuff. Like this. This room took me a while. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to do a lot of cool skips like that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's I... the end of the crossroads, and we into Stoneheart City. Wow, that is just so. That's me. <laughs> um, but that's what I love about speedrunning is just being able to see kind of like how the game is played differently, but also the movement is super good. Like it's very yeah. clean. No, the movement is incredibly satisfying in this game. So we're going to equip Aerial Rat. Yeah, like stuff like this too. I'm going to sneak over to a ledge by using Spin and Double Dash, which wouldn't be possible without having this ability. So we save like a lot of time instead of going around and doing a bunch of platforming. So like that's like even just a small instance of doing that. And then we enter the Force Shrine. So this is where Nuos is going to be and where we're going to save him from um, the corruption that is here. So there's kind of like a boss at the end of the arena that's corrupting Nuos, and we're going to save him from that. This is going to be a good example of uh, what I was talking about with Zelda influences. This is kind of like a Zelda-esque dungeon, uh, but we're, again, we're going to absolutely break it by having double dash. Um, this is like the second lever you're supposed to hit in the dungeon that would lower the water all the way to the bottom, but we can just hit it right from the beginning uh, and skip basically all of that unnecessary stuff but we still have to get this dungeon's item, which is Nuos' Claws. It should be on the other side. So that would have been the first lever over there that we just avoided. And we get into this combat arena. This will be a perfect example of um, getting over doors early just to save that little bit of time too. I can spin and just squeeze through the top crack to save that little bit of time waiting for the door to go down. One thing I haven't really pointed out so far is uh, Spin Attack is actually really good in combat. So after a little bit of a charge, it hits like multiple times as I hit the enemy one time that time, but that's fine. No, oh, hi please, thank you. 
Uh, it's very useful. Not useful against every enemy, because some enemies are too short, and you kind of notice that the spin attack launches you up. So if they're too short, then it doesn't work super nicely, but in most cases, it works pretty nice. Especially in, like, this room. If I can get this room to work uh, how I want, I can usually hit both of them a good amount of times, and then, if I'm lucky, kill them both with one spin attack. Kind of walk in the middle, trying to beat them both in. Yeah, I got one of them. That's fine, now. Nice. Yeah. Basically just a big crisscross, grabbing keys, opening doors. What did you think about this game casually when you played it, Rue? Because you mentioned that you played it casually, right? Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it took way longer than what you're doing <laughs> right now. And uh, no, I actually, so at RPG Limit Break, uh, I had some downtime and then I started playing it there. Um, this was 2022. And then uh, once I got home, I finished it because I was just like, oh, this is actually like, you know, it was good. It was great. And um, mm -hmm. no, I just, the whole entire time, I, I liked the puzzles and I liked the platforming. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of what kept me engaged the whole entire time. However, yeah. I did pay that that person back. <laughs> Just letting you know. Nice. I went okay. back. Okay. So, uh, something I didn't really mention earlier. I did do one earlier. Wow. Okay, that's a bit unfortunate. That's fine, though. Um, is that with the directed dash, where you kind of like lock onto something and dash to it, didn't really explain it earlier, so I'll quickly explain it. Basically, you might have noticed that uh, Umbra, the main character, whenever I dash, dash is very horizontally, right? Like, even if I'm in the air or, like, on a horizontal subsurface, I dash very horizontally. Um, but if I'm targeting something, um, I can actually avoid... Eh, okay, we made it. Um, I can actually dash towards that enemy. So you saw me target the flying enemy that was above me and dash up to them. And there's also something else that if you untarget them as you're dashing to them, you'll actually fly past them. So I was able to use that to skip like a larger platforming section here. All right, that is the end of this temple. And by the end, I mean I just need to equip some swords and defeat a boss really quick. But hopefully it goes quickly. The bosses here can be a bit finicky sometimes, but if we're all lucky, we can get a two cycle on this. But fingers crossed. This is Gra. Across a little plant that likes to slam to the ground and make damage rings. It's fine. We can take him here. He's gonna spot some ads. You can see the power of spin attack in this fight. Oops. Again, one more ad phase. This didn't go the greatest, but that's okay. You only lose a little bit of time uh, if you don't get the boss that you want, but you can definitely add up if you get a bad attempt. That's okay. Not dying is the important part. And then we go talk to New Wells. Okay, I feel kind of bad. I have this plushie in my room. Mm hmm. But I don't remember the name of the main character. It's Umbra. Umbra? Yes. Oh, kind of like uh, uh, the Pokemon Umbra? Or yeah. not Umbra? Is it Umbra? No, oh, Eevee's sure Evolution. Umbreon? Umbreon, there you go. There you go. But just think of it like Umbreon. Yeah, Umbreon, but with an A at the end. Umbreon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Umbreon. <laughs> Umbreon yeah. is a good name. That is a pretty name, actually. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we finish that, we do a save and quit to end up back here, and then we're gonna go to the abandoned path next. Uh, but we need to get the graveyard key first. So we're gonna do a little bit of cool movement on some ledges, squeeze up here, and head over to the barkeep that has the key. He's gonna give us a side quest that, uh, since we're trying to go fast, we're not gonna do, but you know, if you're doing 100%, you can do that, I guess. Here's another perfect example of trying to squeeze through the top of a door, too. We use a wall jump and a spin to squeeze up a little bit higher and squeeze through the top of the door. I love that you're doing so much, like, so quickly. Yeah. You're doing a very <laughs> beautiful job explaining it, because I'm sitting here going, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the run is very, uh, it's a very pleasing run to watch. There's a lot going on, 
in a very cool way too. It's like very like one thing to the next, which is really awesome. So we're gonna do a bunch of cool little movement over to Youth's Temple, which is like another little dungeon that we'll have to do. Head in here. This will be another perfect example of a direct dash cancel. We'll call them DDCs as well. So if you ever hear me say that, um, that's what I'm referring to. Um, I'm gonna quickly get over to this chest to grab a key. And then I'm going to attempt to DDC off this enemy which means I'd need to not get hit that. And then I can get up here really quick, which skips like the wall jump section over to my right that you would have to do normally. You can might be able to see the uh, bit of a Wind Waker inspiration here from the Temple yeah. of Gods, when you kind of like play the song and control the little dudes. Yeah. I'm gonna play Wind Waker again. That's been a hot minute. It's a very good game. I'm currently doing a Zelda-thon on my stream, where I've been playing through every mainline Zelda game, and I'm very excited to get to Wind Waker. I haven't gone there yet, but um, it's one of the few games that I've played growing up, so... Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you play this game casually, so you'll probably laugh a little bit about how uh, broken it is in the speedrun. But we can uh, use wall jumps and spins to basically absolutely... <laughs> Uh, break this dungeon a little bit. No, I need to get this wall jump. These wall jumps can be a little finicky sometimes, but there you go. I'm gonna get all the way up here immediately. Um, there we go. Equip those swords that I just got. I love how you just like crush that in <laughs> like, I don't know, it was like a minute, I think. Yeah. <laughs> there's, um, there's a skip that a lot of casual players will find a lot of the times too in this dungeon. We do a little slightly different variation of it, but uh, you'll see it in a second. We're gonna be grabbing a holy key from this chest, which is gonna give us our next major movement upgrade. We just gotta get over to the chest that it uses to open. Gonna do some more of these like weird wall jumps. These can be a bit finicky sometimes. Okay, we got that one. Yeah, they're being really rude to me right now. You see, we could direct dash off that guy to skip this section, and then we can open this chest. Oh, I also didn't even say what ability we got. We got double jump, by the way. So I can jump two times now. It's really neat. do a cool little skip here too where we dash underneath the fence and then use double jump and spin get up here open the chat door and head over to crow which is the boss of this dungeon so i have a question what did you think of this like when you played it casually it didn't take um, you to beat it casually actually <laughs> it did take me a while actually um the bosses in the later half of the game actually gave me quite a bit of trouble um, but I was very, very excited for this game. I actually played, this game had a demo that came out uh, before its initial release. And I played a lot of this game's demo. Also, I got one cycle here, which is really good. It's a bit finicky to get that one as well. And uh, it saves a ton of time to get one cycle there. This is also a perfect example of not wanting to kill enemies with spin, because they're so short, you would only hit them one time. Didn't get the one cycle there. That's fine, though. Not the first one cycle, which is the important one. Nice. Okay. Well, yeah, I really enjoyed this game casually. I played the demo for like 100 plus hours, I think, um, and speed ran that. Had a really good time with it. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. I think um, the movement, you don't get to see, like, the movement might seem really cool right now, but it is nothing to what it is like in the casual playthrough. Um, the casual playthrough is insane because you'll be unlocking like way more spirits. You'll have way more spirit slots. Um, and the, the game plays almost completely differently than it does right now. Um, it might take a while for you to get like the double dash and like spin that I have right now. So these sections might seem a little bit more casual, but like later on, especially when you're doing later game voids, uh, the time can really speed up. Um, or like the move, the movement can be way different. Like there's one that gives you a triple jump. So instead of just having a double jump, you can jump three times. 
one that extends like your dash length. You get a sprint at some point. Um, there's one that even gives you like a little floor underneath you if you run off a ledge and you're sprinting. It's super cool. The game gets really, really interesting once you've unlocked a ton of stuff. Okay, so we're yeah. gonna quickly go open this door over here. Go talk to Vaughn, which is the character we avoided at the beginning of the run with a cutscene skip. You're gonna mention something, Rue? Yeah, I was just I was mesmerized there for a second. <laughs> um no, I was going to say, yeah, like, it casually, it, it, it's just, like, I would say definitely recommend playing it casually, because, like, even, I mean, the speedrun's beautiful in itself, too. It's just, it, casually, it's just a different uh, yeah. way to play, and so I recommend just even just trying it casually. No, I 100% I recommend it casually as well. Uh, it's a super good game that got overlooked, I think, early on, because it was had a bit of a buggy launch. So it kind of oh. fell off people's radars right when it got released. But uh, it is very stable now. It's actually gotten a free DLC, which is amazing. And the voids that you saw me do early on in the run, there's actually an entirely separate game that they've released for free, or free if you own the game, maybe, uh, that lets you make custom ones, kind of like Mario Maker, which is super cool. Oh, that is cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. OK, I'm going to be quiet just for half a second here as I try not to okay well i'm gonna have to do this again but that's fine i'm gonna heal yeah. here too Take this section is the hardest platforming in the whole run we're gonna do a bunch of uh direct dash cancels well while you are doing this i'm just gonna go with the play-by-play -play of seeing if i can even catch up to what you're doing uh you turned on a switch to open the gate that was easy yeah. <laughs> and then um now we're gonna be going back there's this little cute enemy that you did something with and you flew and then and now we're on a ladder and we climb and we climb and then uh we're in a we're done. let's go we did let's it go. it was a little sloppy but that's fine the enemies can be really finicky there because they shoot like a big aoe blast that's really easy to get caught in and you kind of get put in an icicle and it's you'll like fall down and stuff but we took our time and we made it up which is all that really matters uh, now, I didn't really um, mention, I'm getting absolutely owned by these wall jump sections right now. Why is this happening? I'm not holding dash for long enough, I think. Watch me. I will this. make it eventually. No, you got this, I believe. There I believe. we go. There we are. See? You got it. You got this. Okay. I could yeah. do that. <laughs> Yeah, the wall jump stuff can be a little finicky sometimes, which is uh, definitely makes those sections a little bit stressful sometimes. There's definitely some later on in the run uh, that are very, very precise. So these are this is just warm up for later. This is also the gate that I opened earlier. It gives us access to the safe one, which we'll use for a warp later. Well, I will have to say that I do like the... Um... I do appreciate the uh, the play by play by me earlier, where I was like, "Hey, that's a gate." Yep. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you saying that was a gate. Yeah. <laughs> it is a gate. You got it right. <laughs> Thanks. I'm such a great commentator, I know. There we go. Let uh... that wall climb. Nice. Okay. So just to get, quickly explain what's going on here, because I really haven't yet. Uh, we're basically. Uh, Gon set the objective by Vaughn when we went to Temple Garden to basically defeat the three Shadow Lords, uh, which are the next big three bosses in the run. And each of them kind of have their own little objective and that you need to do to uh, defeat them. Uh, one of them, which is what we're doing right now, is you have to collect Shadow Essence, or uh, Soul Essence, sorry, uh, from a bunch of different sections. And then another one, which we're about to do here, is you're going to have to kind of find these paths into the waterways and activate four uh, flames. And the other one has like another temple. So we're going to kind of overlap tasks as best as we can and kind of do them all um, simultaneously to try to save as much time as possible. Uh, so we're going to activate this, which will put us in another little cutscene. Vaughn will kind of explain what I was talking about with the four torches, but you'll see one of them get lit here. 
By the way, Very that nice. kind of remind me from uh, Skyward Sword, I think it was, where you had to like go inside the spirit realm, go get the little orbs, and there was like yeah. a flower. More Zelda influence. Yeah. I think it was Skyward Sword. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> let me let me look it up now, because yeah. I do love Zelda. Research time. But yeah, so we're going to be doing another one of those, actually, speaking of in a second here. There's one in Temple Garden, which is the area that we were just in a little bit earlier. It's in the beginning, kind of middle section. Yeah, you can see it on the bridge here. Yeah, it was. It was Skyward Sword. Yeah. So yeah, these sections are pretty cool because they kind of like ask you to maneuver uh, the terrain in a pretty interesting way. This one in particular is pretty cool. I like the uh, the one in Firefall River the most, which is the one we'll be doing next. But this one is also really cool. I'm gonna be climbing a lot of ladders and stuff. Get on the ladder. There we go. Okay, so you were mentioning earlier that you're playing all through the main Zeldas. Which one are you on right now? I am on Skyward Sword, actually. Oh. I used my double dash. It's fine, though. Something I really I haven't mentioned yet, but some of you keen observers might have noticed, is that double dash actually has a cooldown, which is represented by that tier on the left-hand side of my screen. There's also a very slight sound effect that plays when it comes off of cooldown. Um, but... A big part of movement in this game is actually managing uh, your cooldowns, like most games that have cooldowns. So you want to make sure that you're using them as efficiently as possible. So uh, if I use one by acting a little bit too early or something like that, it can actually throw stuff off a decent amount. So I need to make sure that I'm using them when I intend to use them. A lot of thought has gone into routing that game for that reason. Mm, I could see why. It's actually, uh, I, I appreciate you saying that, because I was seeing this teardrop, but I didn't think it was regarding to the movement. Yeah, no, it's it's regards to the double dash, because it's the fire firekeep tier, I think is the name of the spirit. So there's a little bit of lore for you. Yeah. Okay. All right, since this is a little bit of a marathon run ask, I'm going to grab this save just in case something goes bad a little bit later. I highly doubt it, but it takes like 10 seconds to grab, not even. So we'll quickly grab that. In case something goes poorly later. I doubt it, but you can never be too safe. Uh, no, I... Uh, <laughs> um, the one thing I do have to say about this game too that I actually enjoy is kind of the lore of it as well. Um, I know at first I didn't quite get it, but then... like, It's kind of like that game, like uh, Fia. Or Fia. Yeah. No, Fia. Uh, where it's just kind of like there's not a lot, but you get it as you go on kind of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was, that was this game for me. I slipped and fell. Where am I? <laughs> um. Actually, where am I? Am I? I'm lost. Oh, I'm over here. Okay, I understand now. <laughs> I've never died there, and I got very confused for a moment. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, no, the, the lore is very cool for this game. It definitely needs like a little bit of reading up on because it's like a very obtuse kind of game. Um, but other than that, it is very neat. We're gonna do a cool little death warp here, by the way. We're gonna hit this switch, which opens the gate right where next to the door we were. And then we're gonna dash over into this lava waterfall, die, and then we end up all the way back up here, which is right next to the gate. Oh, hey, yeah. look, another gate. <laughs> so many gates. <laughs> uh, no, so I. Uh, is, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna mention that this is another one of those waterways that we needed to unlock. So, get another one of those torches. All right, back we go. To the flames of the darkness. Mm -hmm. the main quest. Now, I will have to admit, um, so have you 100% this game? Because I didn't. Um, 
I don't think I have personally, just because I'm not that type of gamer. I very, very rarely 100% games. Yeah. Um, but I've gotten very close. I did, like, most of the extra content. I just, like, if there was, like, a random thing that I missed, I didn't, like, scour the map for it. Uh, I got very close to 100%ing it, basically. There is some very cool stuff that you end up unlocking uh, if you 100% the game, though. There's also some very funny outfits and hints to other uh, games in the, the genre, other indie games. Uh, if you guys have heard of Pumpkin Jack, there's a Pumpkin Jack outfit that you can actually unlock in this game, which is really cool. Uh, you can unlock uh, Hat Smug, which is the Smug Kid dance from uh, Hat in Time. This guy, this little worm guy can be a little spooky sometimes. He'll one-shot you, so I gotta be really careful. Well, not one-shot you, but if you're low enough, he can. We're gonna do a DDC off this sign. There we go. Get up here. I pick it over the that little flicking you fly. <laughs> yeah, so no, it's it's so it's super awesome. There's a ton of sections in the run that make it uh super cool. Yeah. All right. On our way over here. So I kind of mentioned what two of the bosses are looking for you to do, which is the water waste thing and the soul essence. For the fire one, which is uh, surprise, surprise, kind of where we're at right now, it's another dungeon-esque area. So we're going to be entering the, what is it called? I have it in my notes. Well, it's right there on screen, the steam house. <laughs> um, and this section is really cool. It's got the uh, super hard wall climb that I was talking about. Uh, but like I said, we're all warmed up for those right now. And it's kind of warm in here, so I'm sure that uh, I'll be nice and loose for them. Okay, that was one of the easier ones, but it went well. So that's a good indication for the later one. The later one is super awesome. We're basically going to climb a wall and end up on some of the terrain of the windows. And it's going to basically allow us to stop a lot of like scripted platform movement where like the platforms are super slow. Uh, this is Mira. Mira's going to give us a key and kind of explain that the boilers are broken and that's why the elevator right beside us isn't working. So it gives us a steam key to go have a look-see and see if we can figure out why they're broken. Her sister happens to be out there looking as well, so we're going to see if we can go find her sister. Oh, I am going to ask this question just because. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the question from chat was, what Legend of Zelda game is this? Uh, well. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I got news for you. <laughs> oh, so close. This is the super hard wall climb that I was mentioning. You have to like basically maximize every little bit of the wall climb. There we go. And get enough distance to get on that window. Ooh, nicely done. That looked really hard. This is sad. I think no. I'm dead, yes. It's okay. I got a wall grab, which I wasn't expecting, but that's fine. I get to show it off again, right? Yes, yes. Let's go. Let's do it. There we go. Nice. We got it. Because, yeah, ideally what happens here is I don't grab the wall, and then I can do that. Which worked out this time. Nice. Beautifully done. That was beautiful. If I could clap, yeah. but I'm not going <laughs> to clap. But I'm clapping in my head. We're good. Yes. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> Do a little pogo off this guy. I didn't mention, I think I mentioned it earlier, actually, never mind. Uh, but you can pogo off of an enemy and you'll get your double jump and dash back. Um, any uh, Kingdom Hearts fans out there, we're gonna get a new set of swords called Iron Justice. And they uh, kind of look like keys. Um, and we're gonna put them in here, give them a good turn. That's gonna fix this boiler, that's all it needed. So in the, that this whole place was heart, heartless. <laughs> yeah, we'll I may or may there. not like Kingdom Hearts. Just a little bit. Definitely. That's a game I actually need to play. Now that they have the PC port and I can actually play them, because I never had the console growing up, I should actually get around to playing those games. All right. So basically, we're just going to be going running around, activating all these boilers. I 
I will say this if you are going to start playing Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. There, there's a lot of people in the speedrun community that will absolutely help out. But just just remember when you play it, the storyline's a bit. Um, a little obtuse. <laughs> yeah, very obtuse. Yeah. But uh, definitely, I, I love the game series just because of the fact that it was kind of like, you know, Disney and Final yeah. Fantasy and, you know. Okay. From everything I know about it, it seems like a super duper cool game. And everyone I know absolutely loves them, so. Yeah. Okay, so this is the last spoiler. We're going to do a saving quick here to go back to the shrine that I'm 99% sure I took. For some reason, I can't remember grabbing it, but, you know, we risk it for the biscuit. I'm like 90% sure I grabbed it. I remember going from the angle that I was supposed to, so. Yeah, I hear I hear the sounds of a factory, so we grab the shrine. Um, so what, we fixed the elevator, which means that we can now go to Russ Village and go visit all the Unops, which are basically these little fellas, and we're actually gonna do a little side quest. One of you keen observers might have noticed that I grabbed a rose a little bit earlier in this run, uh, and it's for this side quest that's gonna get us a pair of swords. So we're going to go talk to Barry, and Barry's having a little bit of trouble in his love life. His heart is broken because he has this lady friend that he really wants to win over. So he asked us for a rose. We gave him a rose, and we'll, we'll come check back with him in a moment here. And we're going to have to leave the area and kind of refresh it to refresh his quest. We also got an interaction with Vaughn there, which gave us the key to go fight the boss. Um, but again, thanks to the devs, we can skip the cutscene. So no Vaughn for us. Okay, let's uh let's head back into Rust Village and go see how Barry's doing. Okay. <laughs> let's go see how he's doing. I think I think you might have done pretty well personally, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, they have a kid. What? It's been it's been like 30 seconds. <laughs> that was the fastest kid ever. <laughs> you yeah. sped for the kid. <laughs> kid percent. Kid percent. Uh, so we get uh, a pair of swords like this, or the swords that we'll be using for the rest of the run. It's actually really funny. Barry actually has a line about how uh, the Unops work fast, which is very funny in this case, too, since it, especially they work very fast in our case. Okay, so we're going to be fighting our first of the Shadow Lords, and in my opinion, probably the hardest or second hardest uh, in the run. Mm. So it's going to be interesting. The beginning, first two phases are pretty easy, but then it gets uh, a little difficult in the later half of it. So I might go concentration mode towards the end of this fight. Okay. Okay. I'll be really good at the play-by-play -play just by saying there's another gate. Oh, you're yeah. gonna love this one, Michael. There's a there's some fun things to commentate in this fight. Okay. So, as we are dodging, and now we are attacking, I'm I'm trying to understand. Uh, I'm trying to describe this, but I'm doing a horrible job. Uh, the Just, sun came out, of, and then there was lava. And now it's Fall Guys. Yeah, Stop the fan. <laughs> it's Fall Guys. So Fall Guys came into blue fire today. And uh, we gotta make sure. <laughs> uh, good thing we don't have other people, you know, racing us on the platforms and making sure they don't push us off. Uh, so as we <laughs> we are destroying the boss, <laughs> I'm so, I can't get over the fall guys fire. I'm so tired over here. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Uh, now he's in range. I think this may be the second phase, maybe the third phase. I don't know, but we'll see. Now it's becoming kind of like, you know, there's these lock lava things, bombs coming at you, and then um, swipe ruse and making sure you don't get attacked by them. So, oh, nice. That's nice cool. like that. that boss went basically as well as you can ask for, so that's good. Yeah. I didn't think of Fall Guys, to be honest with you. But yeah. then when you said Fall Guys, I'm like cracking up because I didn't think of it. Yeah, someone in my chat mentioned it ages ago, and I'm like, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. And I'm just as stressed as I am when I play Fall Guys. So I'm like dodging a fan, and I'm dodging bombs, and then he's like melee attacking me. There's like a lot of going on. So. Yeah. 
But so that boss is actually a hard, like he's either the hardest or the second to hardest. Yeah, the next boss, Bira, that we'll end up doing, I would say is most likely the hardest. Um, a lot of her attacks will do half of my HP. So if I get hit twice back to back without the opportunity to heal, I'll literally just die and uh, oh. have to redo the fight. So it can be a bit risky. Got it. But as you can see, we defeated one of the three Shadow Lords. The three of them are on the wall there. Once we activate all three, we'll be able to go fight the queen. So we're going to do a quick save and quit to end up back at a fire shrine so that we can warp back to fire keep, which if you remember is the first area that we were in the run and we're going to do another soul essence section over there. Hmm. Should, should we go back to the elevator dude and pay? <laughs> go pay. No, I, I got, I got, I got a queen to kill. That's, that's his payment. I'm saving the world. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> all right. So, all the way back to Firekeep. We are going to go activate the Soul Essence. Thing over here. Fun fact, the reason that there's a gate on this wall is because of me. I broke the game and the devs were like, no, and they put a gate there. So I can claim that. Really? That is my gate. Yeah, I found a way to get across the bridge, uh, across to the bridge, I should say, that I just like came over from with like a single dash. And they're like, you know what? We're just gonna, we're just gonna put a gate here. So people can't do that casually by accident. And I was like, you know what? That is fair. Yeah. Casual experience is very important and making sure that the casual experience is still good. Uh, it's also very important. Yeah. Well, the but other I get thing to claim that as my own gate now. As yeah. Gate. <laughs> it's Glitz Gate. <laughs> I, I don't know. Have you ever heard of Stargate? Uh, maybe I'm dating myself here. I've heard of it. I have no idea what it is, though. Okay. It's like one of those things where I know what it is, or I've heard of it, but I just don't know what it is. But uh, I'm also old, so, you know. I'm old. I uh, I used to watch Stargate as a kid, so I was just thinking like, Clint Stargate or no? I yeah. think Clint's Gate is working better. I mean, my whole shtick for my community is like a galaxy and stars, so you know it kind of works. Ooh, okay, okay. Okay, this is the last soul over here. Come on, there you go. We're gonna do another save and quit to get back to the shrine, and then we're gonna warp back to Abandoned Path. And we're gonna climb the tower again. And we're gonna go fight Bira. Just a lot of warping around towards the end of the run, just because it's the fastest way to get around to all these different areas. Mm, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's convenient that the save and quit also puts you directly back on the shrine too, so you can just warp again right away. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I know that like in other games, the warp points are quite interesting. Yeah, so back here, warp to Abandoned Path. We're going to have to climb the tower again, um, but we get into <laughs> the cool uh, DDC, direct dash cancel off of this enemy, which lets us fly out of the top. It's one of like my favorite mechanics in this game. It's so cool. Kind of just fly up in the sky like that. I don't know why, but that is like by far my favorite tech, I think. I mean, oh, there's a is, lot of tech, but that's my favorite. It's so satisfying. You just kind of really just like is. glide up, all majestic like, float into the sky. And it looks like it's supposed to happen too. That's the other thing. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's like all that's really happening is like you're using an intended mechanic and then breaking it just a little bit by canceling the target. So the game handles it really well and makes it look like it almost is something that is supposed to happen natively in the game. Mm -hmm. All right, here's Bira. She has my favorite boss music in the game. So enjoy this. And then also I'll try not to die. Good luck. Got a big ice sword. I 
honestly really enjoyed this boss a lot. Yeah, this boss is super cool. Except for these icicles. I always get hit with these icicles. Yeah, they're a little bit... Not even close. We're fine. <laughs> You're fine. Oh, uh, this might be, yeah, a bit unfortunate. I'm gonna have to do another cycle here. That's fine, though. Be really careful, though, because I'm quite low. Okay, that's fine. We should be able to get here. I was a little too far away with my uh, initial spin attack. That I actually like didn't hit her with the full thing, so I didn't get enough damage. But that's fine. Just added another phase, and so long as I don't die, that is the thing that matters most. Yeah, sometimes I, I know that like uh how do I put it? It's like marathon safety, basically, yeah. is the best way to describe that. Is where it's like, you know, you just want to make sure you're better safe than sorry. Exactly. If especially in a game like this, even if you're doing runs casually. Um, obviously, if you're like pushing for a really, really good time, it's like understandable if you want to be a little bit risky with the fight. But it dying, especially in this game, is really punishing. I'd be put back all the way at that save point that I initially like save and quit to, so I'd have to do all that movement again to get back here and then do the boss fight again. So making sure I don't die there is like, uh, especially for real time and like marathon safety, is like really good. Making yeah. Make sure that I am not yeah. dying. Okay, second one down. One more to go. We're gonna do another save and quit here in a second. I'm honestly glad that you got back into speedrunning again. Are you gonna to try to submit it for Usher DQ? Yeah, that's the plan. Hopefully I can get this in. I think it's a really, really good game and I think a lot of people would, especially um after I started speedrunning it, I kind of grew my community through other games since I ran it a long time ago. Cause I ran it right when it released like almost basically two years ago now. Um, I've grown my audience since, and everyone that has watched me run this- Oh, wait, I need to go somewhere else. What am I doing? I got distracted. I need to go to Arcane Tunnels and do the last two Wanderways. But, as I was saying, um, I introduced a lot of people to this game, and they all were like, What is this game? This game is so cool! So, I'm very glad I've been able to show it off to more people. And I get to show it off on your show, which is super awesome. Show it to even more people that way as well. Yeah! Uh, well, it's very- I mean, I have a plushie, so... When you were yeah. like, split fire, I'm like, oh, yes, yes. please. No, I'm glad. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny. My nephew tried to take my plushie from me, and I'm like, uh. No. <laughs> I'll buy you another one. <laughs> yeah. If it was still, I, I think when I looked, it wasn't available at the time. Yeah, I think they did a limited run right when the game came out uh, yeah. for the Umber plushie. So, got a very exclusive item there. I do. Okay, so we have one more waterway to go. Some of you might be wondering why we didn't do these earlier, and it's because we actually had to unlock um, the stone, the sanctuary stone from Vaughn before that we could do this. So now that we have it, we can come back here and do all these. Same thing with the Void Souls. That was a little bit more self-explanatory. Oh, I died. No. That's fine. We can just reset the lever. This is like a very small time loss because all I have to do is go through here. Yeah. I thought I was going to grab the ledge, but I was like ever so slightly too far. If Maybe I could I show the plush, I would, but I'm I'm the mysterious voice as a host. <laughs> I just ship it to me really quick on Express. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you throw it really hard, it might show up in time. Yeah, if I show, if I throw it at the of my screen, yeah, exactly. it'll show up in Discord. Discord delivery. Exactly. Okay, so all the lights are lit. Uh, that's a cool outfit if you're playing casually. Make sure to grab that. Makes you look really edgy. Um, and we're going to go do Samuel. Uh, funny enough, this I would consider the easiest of all the big bosses in the run, but it is the boss that I lost a minute to in my PB, so I don't say that oh. anymore until I just said it now, but he is the easiest boss in the run. 
he just killed me and I lost a lot of time and it makes me sad, but it's okay. <laughs> Aww. I'll, I'll just get a better BP next time. Exactly. Ooh. I think the one that I had the hardest on was the flame one. Yeah, no. The F Fall Guys boss is really hard. You have to dodge the fan, the bombs. Yeah, I got the heal off this time, which is what I missed last time. And what cost me this fight. We have the heal, so we're good. Ooh. heal off um i could have been fine it's just um a safety thing mostly because i go for a risky strat at the beginning oh, i have to do a whole cycle of this again that's fine though. normally there i got there i got to the boss a little late so i didn't get to get the full spin off there we go finish samuel Good to go. And that's the nice. last one. Well, great job on showing all three of those. Those, those aren't, I know for sure they're not easy in the sense yeah. of. No, they definitely uh, might beat you up a little bit if you play this game casually. Um, especially, uh, you, you might have a bit of an easier time because you won't be on five hearts the whole time, but um, if you play on one of the harder difficulties, you might have a little bit of a harder time. Alrighty. So, final boss time. We have defeated the Queen's three lords. And now the door will open. If you guys get a little bit motion sick from screen shake, I look away for like 10 seconds. They really, they went a little overboard with this screen shake. It goes in like big circles and stuff. So, wee, here we go. It's an earthquake. So we're going to fight Queen. Queen is usually pretty consistent. Um, things can get a little rough towards the end, depending on how patterns go. Um, but this boss fight is really cool. I especially really, really like the design of the second half. Um, the design of the Queen in the second half of this fight is super, super cool. Uh, time will be at the end of this boss fight on final hit. Uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to call, but if you're just watching the game and you see the queen die, uh, just push that time button and you should be good to go. the design of the queen. Yeah, the queen is super cool. Yeah. I really liked uh, like the overall idea to what she looks like. Yeah. So are we playing Fall Guys, but like a different level now? Yeah, <laughs> basically. Ooh, that is unfortunate. Luckily, it doesn't do too much damage, but that means that we most likely yeah, we'll have another phase of this, uh, which is okay. Some of you might have noticed that every time I get hit in some form or fashion, I uh, lose my spin attack. Which is something that's relatively important for uh, doing damage. Yes. Okay, this half a queen is super cool. There's an audio cue. 
use here to kind of tell which one is. You can kind of see that she has that like fan behind her back as well. There's gonna be a couple clones that show up. It's this one. Okay. We should spawn in the same spot. And time! Nice. Nice! Nicely done! Thank you! <laughs> you did such a wonderful job. Yes, I'm happy I was deathless. I was slightly worried that one of the bosses might go a bit poorly, but they didn't go as planned, but I was managed to play safe and clean and managed to not die to any of them, so that's the important thing. Yeah, I would have to say that uh, you did a very, very beautiful job showcasing the movement as well as the Tark, as well as explaining everything. So I appreciate Thank you, you doing all of that because I know that like when you're running a game like this, it can be, uh, how do I put it? It's a talent to speed run and commentate at the same time. It, it really yeah. is. It's very hard to like, especially when a, a game is so movement based, um, or a speed run is so movement based more so, but, um, but yeah, so I, I, while we have you here, uh, yes. would you like to give any shout outs or if anyone was interested in speedrunning, what's the best way of speedrunning Bluefire? Sure, um, if you're interested in running this game, uh, it's pretty easy. On the SRC page, there is a link to the Discord and in the Discord, there's a link to a couple different written guides and a video guide for NMG. Glitchless doesn't really have anything super documented, but there aren't many glitches. So if you just watch a VOD and kind of follow along, uh, you can have that, or you can even just ask questions in the Discord. Uh, in terms of shoutouts, uh, uh, nothing super crazy. Shoutouts to you, Rue, for putting on an awesome show and having for having me on. Uh, to GDQ for holding hot fix throughout the year, and uh, for holding Frame for Tales that's happening in two days. If you guys didn't know, <laughs> so make sure you're tuned in for that. We got plenty of cool runs happening for a whole week. Uh, shoutouts to the developers of this game. Actually, the developers were so 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 nice the community and the speedrunners uh, initially in this game. As you can see in the top right, I've actually been running with in-game time this whole time as well. That is something that was added post-release by the developers. They also added all the cutscene skips that I mentioned as well. So to Gabriel and the rest of the team, thank you so much for putting all that work in. Really, really appreciated. Um, if you're interested in playing this game, definitely pick it up, play it casually. It's absolutely amazing. All the voids and stuff and the things that you unlock while playing it casually is super awesome. And uh, yeah, even you can play the Void DLC, which is super good. This game is a, a hidden gem in my heart, and I think more people should play it because I think more a lot of people really enjoy it. And it goes on sale quite a bit, so uh, you can pick it up and play it. I think it's on all major consoles now too, so if you want to play it on your Switch, on Steam, or any other console, you can do that as well. Oh, well, thank you, thank you again. It was wonderful having you on again. You're always a great... Yes, thank you for having great me. great delight. Yeah, yeah, and it's I, honestly, I'm gonna find you at SGDQ. I know that sounds kind of creepy, but you'll I find me. I'll be there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, if um, not, I'll find you. I'm sure. Speaking of SGDQ, is gonna be coming up. Just looking out for that. Anyone who's interested, uh, you could go on the website. Uh, definitely can check out all the information there. Also, it's on the Twitter page as a pin. So yeah, definitely have to say that it's gonna be a lot of fun. I am gonna go to SGDQ. I am so excited, but I'm also gonna be, you know, maybe doing some things at Frost. So <laughs> that's gonna be yeah. fun too. Uh, a a lot of fun stuff coming up. Yeah. Um, and then thank you again. I, I really, the SGDQ submissions are opening up. So just yeah, kind of. One last thing I do is I wanna echo what Osborne said. If you guys weren't here for that, uh, if you ever thought about submitting to a GDQ and thought that, oh, maybe I probably won't get in, so I won't submit, just, just do it. Just uh, submit. If it's something that you've always wanted to try to do, uh, then do it. Because if you get in, the worst thing that happens is uh, you don't get in. And the best thing that happens is uh, you get in and you get to show off an amazing game. So make sure you get your submissions in over this coming week. Aww. I love hearing that. Well, definitely yeah. try getting those submissions in. I know it's open starting very soon. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So thank you for coming on the show. It was a delight. And yeah, thank course. you all for showing up in chat and you're all GD cuties in my heart and you're all cutiful and I all hope you have a wonderful night as this is legally cute and we are done for the night but I will be back in two weeks 
I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, two weeks. That's what it is. Two weeks from now. <laughs> Y'all have a good one and you take care. Good night. Bye, everybody.